Hello, everybody. Um, this is going to be a bit of a different format than uh, people might be used to here. So I'm going to explain this first. And um, if uh, Jay and Rich could maybe mute their mics because I can hear myself. That would be cool. One down, one to go. Rich, could you maybe mute your mic and you hang out of interface for a moment so I'm not feeding back to myself? Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing you a, a little something, and then we're going to be discussing what we're playing after we all listen. And um, here is what's up. Um, Drake from the Drake update show on the uh, Cosmic Voice uh, radio thingy and uh, Facebook group and so on and so forth. Um, he is, I guess, what some might consider an insider, whistleblower, or whatever. I consider him just yet another person with his right to his opinions and, and views on uh, the subject of world events and what's going on. Now, one uh, extremely wise decision that um, Drake has made is to, well, just for a familiar reference, uh, to shortcut it here, to not quote unquote pull an Alex Jones. And what I mean by that is not making absolute definitive claims and not making absolute definitive time statements like, oh yeah, yeah, the globals are going to be doing this on that, this is that date, and you got to be prepared, and da, 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 you know. So Drake doesn't hype the shit out of it and then look like an asshole after he does it. And Drake always says that he will never give definitive anything until or unless he knows 100% for damn sure that things are definitive. So for the first time ever, he's given some very definitive absolute statements on something. And um, so the way I see it, Either, you know, this is uh, completely legit and we're going to see some interesting stuff happen, or um, Drake just pulled an Alex Jones, and um, a couple months from now I'm probably going to be doing another paradigm shift in educational comedy, just kind of laughing about it. <laughs> so anyway, um, without further ado... I'm going to go ahead and, and play this through. I've obviously cut out all of the, um, you know, musical intermission and stuff like that and um, kind of condensed it. And it was a shorter show than he normally does. I mean, he normally does, like, three-hour shows. And, um, you know, I've got this down to, like, 50 minutes. So we're going to listen to this for 50 minutes, and then... Um, Jay and Rich are going to come back online with me here, and uh, we're, we're going to discuss this. And, um, you know, you guys out in the uh, YouTube audience there, you can discuss it in whatever chat room that frickin' uh, Google Plus has put in place and make your comments and, you know, whatever. I mean, the purpose of this is not to tell any of you what is or what isn't. I just think that this is some really interesting information, so I'm just sharing this just as data, and I'm going to have my opinions about it, Jay's going to have his opinions about it, um, Rich is going to have his opinions about it, and all of you are going to have your opinions about it, which is fine, so believe nothing, disbelieve nothing, <laughs> you know, a belief is just a, a disbelief is just a belief in the lack thereof anyway. So, um, you know, just keep an open mind, observe the information, and you know, kind of go with your heart, go with your mind, cr think critically, and, you know, make of it whenever you want to make of it. Um, if you think it's legit, cool, you know, we'll all see. And if you think it's crap, then cool. You know, you have every right to think it's crap, and it doesn't make you some horrible person or a psyop agent or blah, blah, blah. And if you think it's legit, it doesn't make you a conspiracy nut, paranoid, whatever. Just, yeah, everybody has the right to think of this, uh, what they want to think of it. So I'm going to disable my video, seeing as I'm going to be playing this through from the other computer, 
and I really don't think that you guys looking at an empty couch is really going to amuse you too much or entertain you, so here we go. Just going to walk over to my machine here, and going to start things playing, so everybody sit back, relax, and enjoy away. Hi all, and welcome to Cosmic Voice at this unearthly hour for me, but uh, we felt this was important. Um, apologies for the uh, late introductions of the show, but um, Drake came up uh, with some information today uh, that he's going to tell you all, and so we thought it would work to do a show. So um, I hadn't told you previously. Uh, where I, I was going, I went back to the UK. So this is coming live from the UK in my sister's front room. <laughs> so, uh, well, enough of what I'm doing. Um, I'll be back shortly, and uh, we'll bring Drake on. Hi, Drake. Hey, how you do? Uh, I'm doing okay. I've plenty of coffee, I take it. Y yes, to keep you warm. It's bitter over here. <laughs> I need to be like you or whatever floats your boat. Um, yeah. I don't normally, uh, th we weren't going to have a show. I'm going to tell everybody that right up front. Uh, until we got a uh, certain word I did uh, and others from uh, certain um, involved parties and other things, you saw my notice, I hope. I uh, put it on Facebook um, that uh, incommunicado was the word of the day, and it's been that way for several days. I have, however, uh, managed to glean some things from certain people that I know are important. What I'm going to do is run this down to you. i got about three pages I'm going to read to you, and I want you all to pay attention because this is vitally important, not just to us, but the rest of the planet. Now, there are a lot of things going on. People have not caught up to the fact that, as I stipulated uh, several weeks ago, the international borders and boundaries are being redrawn. Uh, Ukraine is an example, one example of that. There will be others, just so you'll know. Don't be too excited and don't worry about it a whole lot. But there's a hundred and some odd nations, 140 to 180, somewhere along in there, who are involved in this. I want to make that perfectly clear. Now, I want you to think about 180 different people trying to get them all on the same page going the right direction, especially when you've got a combination of linguistics, in other words, they don't speak the English, and I don't do that very good myself, and I was born with it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I ain't up on Hebrew and, uh, uh, and Islamic and uh, languages and things of that nature. It just don't fit. I get my tongue, tongue all messed up, and they don't want to talk to me. Okay, these are complex and intricate things. In other words, each uh, the complexity of the whole is multiplied by the complexity in each country. Each country is also intricate in the details. How we're pulling this off and the manner in which it has to be done has to be done very, very carefully. Most think everything is small and local. The logistics, tactics, and activities are worldwide and global in scope. Because of the impact and the no complete results, there are two points everyone needs to pay attention to. Now I'm going to give you a quote. It's going to get hot meaning the situations, and this is all over the planet. Um, <laughs> you need to understand what this is. In the near future, a secondary part of our initiation, uh, initiation actions will take place and begin to move. The momentum is of a type that, can, that will continue with or without those who started it. In other words, it is self-generating, moves on its own. Sort of like a domino. You knock one over and you get a whole bunch of them falling if you got them stood upright. We got them stood upright, and believe me, things are happening. This whole thing is going to be extraordinary, at least, and I can't emphasize how extraordinary it's going to be. Most everything we are familiar with is about to change in very, in a very basic way. Now, <laughs> that um, is an understatement. The ideology and understandings and systems that everybody has put in place monetarily are fundamentally going to be changed. They're going to be changed to the better, but 
Here's the crux. There is no guarantee that this will be peaceful. Although we have tried and done everything we can within our abilities to make sure that it will be, there is no guarantee that this will be peaceful. So, be ready for the fight. If it comes to you, you should already be in touch with your local militia. If not, get in touch with them. If you don't have one, form one. All you got to do is find neighbors got guns or people that want to uh, maintain their freedom and pool things together. Talk to them about this. It's going to start happening uh, very quickly from here on out. Um, have a planned two-week period of self-sufficiency and what goes with it. You know, I told you, money under the mattress, food, water, guns, and ammo. You need to be able to protect yourself from people who would take from you. Stipulation is simple. You've got a whole bunch of people in cities who may freak right out. If they do and decide to come out, out to wherever you're at, you could have a serious problem. might have one anyway, but you have the opportunity to go down with a fight. And if one or two fights, the rest of, the rest of them might decide it ain't worth it and go somewhere else. Hopefully, none of this will take place. Uh, if things get dicey and start to uh, go south, I'm going to try to make announcements to as many people as I can in as many ways as possible in order to get the word out. Don't worry about it. We're working on turning the water back on in New York City. Don't freak out. Uh, we do have emergency caches of uh, food and material located all over the country. This was seen to a long time ago. Okay. Uh, Anyone who has not needs to get a gun and ammo, whether you like the idea or not. Pick somebody in your family who doesn't mind it and deal with it. I'm going to tell you right now, when that trigger the first time is hard when it's on purpose and there's no obvious threat from, so from the op opposition. However, if it's running, screaming, breaking the door down, it becomes a lot easier. Um... There is a probability that some who have not prepared might come after those who are, just exactly what I just stated. Add to this that some of the bad military will try to destroy communications, utilities, and supply. Yeah, that's right. There's still bad guys out there, believe it or not, and these are not nice people. They will roast you on a spit just because it's fun to watch you uh, squirm while you sizzle, and you get to watch your family do that first. I mean, it's just lovely. Now... Outside of the nightmare, uh, a few units of this unlawful military may come after us uh, by coming after as many activists as they can find. Um, they know where I'm at and a whole bunch of other people. And most of the people I know who are true activists know what's going on. They're prepared one of two ways. A boogie bag, where you can disappear into the... Uh, landscape, um, and your family can also do the same, or a stand and, and fight uh, situation where you've got a place to hold up that's um, relatively impervious, whatever whatever the case may be. Those who do not want to fight might want to uh, figure out a way to come under the protection of someone who is willing. That is uh, neighbors, people that you know, etc. What is, what is being done will destroy those in you know, involved with and associated with the cabal. Resistance will be hot and heavy. These people are not going to go quietly. They ain't going to give up their rulership, king for a day or whatever the situation may, may be that they look at it as. Um, yeah, this is insanity. However, the insanity is theirs, not ours. Most people I know of, to include everybody that's been mentioned so far, uh, military and, and whatever, are well aware. Most people know and they're prepared. Um, the bad guys, though they have a religious right to be our rulers and do as they please with our lives. Just exactly that. Remember the Agenda 21 where it stipulates a population reduction of several billion people. I don't intend to be a statistical number by any means. Everyone needs to be ready for anything. You may not uh, pick and choose on this one. This one will come to you. Um, now, irrespective of that, the guardians are in place. Now, by guardians, I mean people on our side. And this is going to blow some minds. Uh, most military, that's a majority, 
somewhere around 90, 80, 90% are with us. Uh, the mafia. <laughs> yeah, crooks don't like what's going on any better than the other regular people. Yakuza, triads, militias. Now, I'm speaking for groups that are spread out all over the planet. None of these generalized uh, groups will be moving or going anywhere. They'll be handling their own problems locally, just as we need to do here. There will be a coordinated effort here uh, as this continues and culminates. And most people have noticed <laughs> those who hate us are still hating. The call is still trying. Now, hate, by definition, is intense hostility and aversion deriving from fear, anger, or sense of injury by those who perpetrate it. It's going to be found that um, many people are going to be put into situations that they had no idea could, would, or could exist. That we will be in uh, the extraordinary position of knowing what's going on, what's coming, what our situation is. You know, the stipulation or the plans that have been laid are simple. <clears throat> in the event that uh, a power plant goes down, we got people who stick in there to start it back up. Now, it might take a day or so. Don't be freaking out over it. Uh, water systems, the same. Communications, the same. Uh, a whole lot of technicians have been notified and are standing by as needs. Most of these are in uh, either general areas or directly locally uh, to be found. Um, people need to understand that um, <laughs> the things I've talked to everybody about on this show are just about to start happening. The problem is going to be whether or not we can keep this as peaceful, peaceful as possible. This means don't go uh, being crazy. Don't be stupid about stuff. Do not take the law into your own hands. Um, <laughs> there are methods and people in place to handle these things. The ideology of rioting and all, all that goes with it is something that is not going to be tolerated. I want everybody to understand that. This is why I am trying to get this message out now. It's a, it is of crucial importance, and the timing is correct in order to do so. People need to pay attention to this. Don't worry about it. It will be handled. It may take a day or so. Uh, generally, within a day, and uh, depending on the power plant, two days. Water systems can be turned back on easily. The militias, uh, as of right now, should be on watch in any kind of a general area where they've heard that there are uh, bad guys they need to watch the infrastructure in those areas. These are your power transmission lines, your power plants, your water purification systems, uh, communications. Don't let some idiot go blowing up cell towers. That's not cool. It's not cool to do anything destructive. Reason being is that the power plan, the power play, and the manner of holding the power of finance is about to come to a screeching halt. It's going over a cliff, and ain't nothing they can do to stop it. <laughs> That's what I meant by momentum. This thing will carry itself to at least a, I'm going to say, 80% completion without anybody uh, directing the, the manner in which it goes. So what you have to understand is that this is, yes, very critical, and <clears throat> it is um, going to be a problem for some, a lot lesser of a problem to others, and the main thing is to not freak out, keep calm, cool, and collected, and just watch. Most of the time, when people are moving around uh, at high speed during uh, some calamity or another, they don't have time to look in the window and see who's in there. I tell you to back off from the window just a little bit, and um, you know, sit there with a shotgun, just in case. Most of the time, they won't go after a house, they'll go after Walmart, or something of this nature. Um, We've got several other problems. One of those is that there are uh, beliefs out there that um, go to a combination of um, origin, 
belief systems, and race. None of these can be taken into consideration. All of those who live in the United States are Americans. Now, I'm not talking about uh, the jihadists that have snuck in. I'm not talking about certain uh, oligarchs who think they're untouchable and have a, a fortress that, that's armed and ready to defend itself. I'm talking about we, the people, all of us. If, and this is the if, and it's up to everybody, don't go shooting people, whether they've done something to you or not, makes no difference. Collect them. Take them to the local pokey. Uh, <laughs> for temporary holding, and it will be temporary. The uh, differential between what was planned for us and what we're going to do to them is this. We should not lower ourselves to their level. This has been all over the Facebook page. I wholeheartedly agree with it. However, whether anybody likes the idea or not, there are going to be those who refuse to go peacefully. There are those who are going to refuse to surrender. And in some cases, not very many, probably only a few, there's going to be armed uh, groups that will go out to try to do as much damage as is possible. If anybody is confronted with this, this is where the militia comes in. They are trained to take these people out as needs. No, I don't like shooting people. No, I think that's horrible. Oh, have I got nightmares? Oh, do I see faces from the people I shot in Vietnam some 30 years ago? However, they also know that I won't hesitate. Be sure of your target. Make sure that it is a bad guy if you are in a situation where you have to shoot. Now, second part of this, all the militias, if this continues in the manner in which it has been put to me, uh, will be contacted by military. When that start, when that comes available, I'm supposed to be notified. I will put out a red light. This is an alert to the militias. Second part of this, everybody's looking for that green light. Neil will tell me when it is uh, time to put the green light up. A great many things are going to be addressed by the releasement of the collateral accounts. Of those, primarily humanitarian need. Uh, employment, full, full absolute employment. Any, anybody, whatever age you are, that can do something and wants to work, can have a job. Some will be paid very well for what they do. The ideology of minimum wage, um, <laughs> I dare you to forget that. The idea that the Federal Reserve note is going to survive, well, I hate to inform everybody, but it ain't. The system set, as I've stipulated before, on a replacement basis, you'll have a treasury note, uh, as I understand it, American dollar, that will be, uh, it will be put into the system. Federal Reserve notes will be taken out. I don't know if anybody's been paying attention to the um, financial news, but uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, have gone off of the petrodollar. They're no longer going to trade in petrodollars. This is huge. Other than that, China and Russia already have begun their system. The United Arab Emirates and uh, whomever will be uh, probably copying or participating in the system that the Soviets and the Chinese have set up. You're going to have a new financial system, uh, one that's being built in, in part in different places. Uh, some in China, some in Russia, some here in the States. The combination of these will facilitate the same sort of capabilities, only greater, that the old system has had. The difference being that it will be a, a totally um, open and above board operation, totally transparent. Anybody wants to know something, Ed, no problem. Here it is. Um, with that, all of the backdoor deals, fun and games, will cease. Um, there's uh, several legal processes involved in a whole bunch of this. There are a load of treaties that are floating around in agreements uh, to put this into place. In other words, you've got uh, 
a hundred and some nations who wish to uh, participate because they do not like what the um, present system has done, either to their people or their country or whatever, and they're looking to get out of that. Now, everybody needs to understand that, yes, this will change. And yes, this will be fundamentally different. Now, store a little cash, about a week or two of food, get you some drinking water, uh, enough to last you that, that long. Um, as I said, guns and ammo. Partner up with people, get to know your neighbors suddenly. Whether you have never talked to them, whether you disagree with them or not, this is a situation of survival. The more people who band together, pull together, and you can have 50 little groups in one little area, as long as they all agree, then you've got uh, a force of substance. You can also more easily survive problems with a group than outside of one on your own. Um, if this gets dicey, my family has been told to move to where I'm at. Get in, get in their, their vehicles and run for it, basically. Um, I do not see, uh, so far, anything that will be extraordinarily serious in terms of like all-out battles or wars, but the possibility uh, had turned from a simple possibility to a probability. There's been some exchanges of information and um, very uh, emotional stipulations by people who uh, do offer um, the, a, a offer things from a position of command or responsibility where they can mobilize people. Now, <laughs> to the military, there is a show that I did on lawful and unlawful orders. It covers what you may and may not do. What you need to understand is that you need to under, you need to know the Constitution in terms of what your rights are, because those rights are also the rights of the people you are dealing with. We may have, and this is something that has not been addressed as of yet, certain checkpoints here and there to make sure who's who. It will not be a total disruption of traffic. It will not be an interdiction, and it will not be martial law. I want everybody to understand that. It will simply be the military protecting we, the people. Big difference. There are certain people that are slated to go into certain offices and key positions so that um, uh, things can continue to run. This does not mean they're going to run the same way they have in the past. It also does not mean that uh, um, you have to worry about it. The people that will be slotted are totally and completely trustworthy, 100%. You ain't got to worry about them. What they're going to be tasked with doing is unwinding the mess we got. And it is going to be temporary. We, we the people, will vote on whether or not we want to keep them. As to terrorists, people who would want to uh, take things down and screw things up and uh, whatever, um, I have yet to meet or hear from any group the uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, whomever it might be, I don't care, what exactly they're looking to fight against and their realization that we have a common enemy, us too, not just you. You are not alone in this. Now, you do not have to act as you have been. There have been atrocities, nasty things, um, unrighteous, executions and I would stipulate that that is not something you should be doing period those things have to be decided in your own religious courts and I have yet to see any reference to that you don't just arbitrarily go after somebody just because they're there or they're different or they happen to be American or whatever your excuse might be and yes I'm tired of the excuses we may no longer, as a world, as a planet, use differences in beliefs as justification for being nasty, let alone um, <laughs> deciding executions and things of that nature at that level. This is no longer acceptable, period, if people wish to have 
a peaceful existence, one of the requirements is exactly that. It doesn't matter if you're Christian and Muslim. You get along together. You trade beans or whatever it is you got to buy and sell. We can work this out to a point where uh, everything that we do between human beings is reasonable and peaceful. And that's basically what everybody has to understand. The golden rule is more than a golden rule. It's stipulated in the Quran and the Bible and a bunch of other places. Oh, there's parts in there that go contrary to it. Oh, you got to go over and destroy these guys. No, you don't got to. What it stipulates is that your rights end in where the other person, the other person's nose begins. That uh, you should treat each and every last individual you come across as you would want to be treated. That's not difficult, and it's not a religious take on anything. This is a simplistic morality that works. It works because you don't have some outside telling you what to do. This has to be internalized. And you listen to that still small voice inside of you that says, any right to her little babies? Period. And you say, you're right. And you do it some other way. You take care of business as business and allow a little humanity in it. I'm not a strict humanitarian, but I disagree with the ideology of battlefields. Battlefields come from the ancient ideology of the blood fields. The blood fields are thirsty. The gods want to suck up the um, <clears throat> spiritual forces that make you who you are. Now, you want to feed some kind of god-awful monster, that's what you're doing when you do that. You're feeding the blood fields, and these monsters are licking their chops. Now, I personally don't feel that we ought to be anybody ought to be subservient to that. Uh, under any circumstances, uh, you need to get your head around this correctly, and yeah, it's not easy, and it's going to give some people a headache. Irrespective, these things have to be done, and there's no way I know of to avoid doing them and have any kind of civilization. That don't mean to kowtow to the cabal and what they've got in mind in terms of the way they've got things structured and what they've been doing to you. It means you can simply be reasonable. Somebody needs a hand up, you give it to them. It don't matter who they are or what they are. I helped the enemy when I was in Vietnam when they were wounded and of no more danger. Yeah, that's right. I put my bandages on them. I helped preserve their life because it's very simple. There's a law among uh, the originals that are known as Indians that stipulates simply this. You may not take anything that you cannot repay. Anybody who cannot give life therefore cannot take it. Not lawfully, according to the Great Spirit. So people need to you need to suck it up and get it, to get it together, and um, we need to do this correctly. And as I said, stage one has been already gone. Stage two is in process. I don't know how many stages there are exactly. Uh, I've heard as many as five, as, as uh, simple as four. And there's actions outside of that combination of uh, legal and moral ground that uh, has not been uh, addressed, but is to be addressed. Okay, Tom. Yes. Now that I got a, now I got a good cold sweat going. Uh, it's your turn. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See what you did. Yes. Uh, um. We can entertain some questions if you want. Um. Well, I said um, we thought I thought we wouldn't have time for questions given um, short notice and short show, but okay. um. <laughs> Well, a couple of a couple of things uh, to support Drake and um, what's been said really um, about remaining calm. Uh, yes, uh, it, it it's not good that you go into panic mode. It's also not good that you go into heightened ecstasy either. You have to remain balanced, and that, that's going to be difficult going forward uh, when we get uh, one or both of those green lights. 
excitement is going to uh, go through the roof with so many different emotions, and we've all experienced it, Drake and I, and Neil as well. It's been a long road. Um, it's been a very difficult road, uh, a very trying and testing road for all of us, and that includes the listeners also. You've had to suffer uh, the same as us in many ways, with families mopping you and friends mopping you, saying you're crazy and all this and that, and suddenly it's happened. And uh, you have to be ready, and we keep saying you have to be ready, but I don't think many realise what being ready is. Because it's fine talking about things, but when they happen, people go, oh my God, uh, yes, I kind of believe what Drake was saying, but now it's here. What do we do? Panic, panic, panic. Put yourself, I, I ask you all when the show ends, to put yourself in the position that you've been given the green and red light and rehearse and go through it. It then, when, when the announcement comes, it allows you to have already taken a uh, place of that, um, uh, replace that emotion with a calm manner to go forward as it's going to be required. And I'm aware that you're going to be uh, pulled, stretched, and strained once those green and red lights are issued. There's going to be uh, a lot going on, a lot uh, that you may not be aware of going on. Same as now, it's no difference. You know, it's only this time you know it's definitely going on, but you still can't see things. You know, but you have to remain calm. So I ask all when you finish the show's finished tonight. Think about that you've, you've had the announcement tonight, the green and red lights, and then relive the emotions. Because when the real one comes, you are going to be better prepared. And uh, oh, I'm so looking forward to that day. I know a lot of people, <laughs> I know a lot of people um, are going to uh, want the overwhelming desire, uh, some more than others. Uh, Drake and I included to go. I told you so, you know. Um, but that has to be put aside because you have to be ready. You uh, have been given uh, by Drake uh, a fa fantastic education over the last two years in a, in a whole variety of things to prepare you for this time. Um, take that on board. Remember it. Maybe in the time between now and uh, the next show, go over a few. Remember what was said, and, and that will then uh, will allow you, when the time comes, to just step into the role, and that role will be educating the people around you who thought you have been crazy for the last two and a half years. And well, suddenly you are, you're going to be in as much demand as me and Drake are uh, for answers. Um, maybe then you'll have some empathy uh, for Drake over the last. Two two and a half years when you're saying, well, when's it happen? When's it going to this? When's it going to that? You are going to be experiencing what we experience. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, me and Drake will be laughing at that. <laughs> uh, well, there's even more. Yes. You left out something. Go ahead. Uh, there's about 6,000 on the Facebook page and the website and whatnot. Yes. I want everybody to think about this. It's 310 million population. Yeah. Let's discount that down to about 250 million. Can you imagine what blog talks gonna do and everybody tries to listen to the show? <laughs> yeah. um, these, these kinds of things uh, are, have been taken into account. I've talked to people in communications and we will make some public announcements. Um, there's going to be a, an international announcement probably preceding the direct announcement in the states from what I can gather so far. However, don't be surprised if uh, sometime or another everybody's uh, program gets interrupted uh, because they've got a um, critical, crucial uh, announcement uh, coming over all the airwaves. Don't be surprised at that. Uh, this is part of the plan. We want everybody and their mother-in-law to know not only how good people got things in hand, but all of the fun and games is being dealt with. It's being it's. The idea was to take down the crooks that have been uh, putting it to us in every kind of a way you can think of for all these years. The education system has to be overhauled. We have to figure out what the hell, what the hell kind of tax system even exists because that's been screwed up. Um, we're going to have to have a whole load of people with, with erasers 
um, and whatnot, just to change the laws. Now you think about that. Now there's going to be uh, what would be considered this a, a similar forum to a constitutional convention. There's going to have to be. Reason being is that you need to have a basic uniformity of law within each of the states. Most people would agree uh, to the idea that uh, you don't have to have a driver's license. Most people would have to agree that uh, wages are non-taxable, so oh, wow, I just got a nice bump in my raise. What are you paying, 50 bucks a week, 100, 200, in cases, some cases a lot more. Um, Nessera will be announced. There's going to be, as I said, very fundamental, drastic, seemingly drastic, but basic changes to the primary structure that everybody has gotten used to. And it's going to be a little shock to your system. Hopefully it won't be too bad. That's it, Tom. Yes. Um, yeah, you know, like Drake was saying, I said earlier, um, just play out the role. But uh, it, 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 the better, more prepared you are. You might think, uh, yes, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm uh, bored waiting for this, and we've been saying this two weeks and soon and all this. Uh, well, one of these days it's going to slam you right in the face, and it will do. And you must uh, mentally and physically prepare yourself for these changes. They're going to be mind boggling. You've all been told all the scenarios uh, available are going forward, all the changes going forward. Not all of them will be implemented, uh, I imagine, uh, straight off. Some will take time, depending on if there's any mess left behind from the cleanup. Um, so that will uh, have a, a negative effect or a positive effect, positive effect depending on, on how the final sort of takedown and removal is. If it goes smoothly uh, and the people behave themselves, and this is important um, for people to go out into the towns and get the message out, because you know, the last thing we need is people causing chaos and carnage, um, and rioting and looting and all kinds of other uh, ridiculous stunts. That's going to make things uh, people be stretched to fix that or prevent that rather than dealing the more positive aspect of moving forward with uh, dealing with Masada or just dealing with uh, removing the smaller elements of the cabal and also dealing with the transition of the banking system and uh, etc etc and obviously depending on electricity and it could be water and it could be food production you know all the people will be better involved dealing with that rather than having to deal with people uh, acting disorderly. So if it's happened, if it happens in your town, please go and go out and tell them with a group of people to stop doing this. Those people yep. will be addressed as quickly uh, and as efficiently as possible. What we don't want is militia and constitutional sheriffs and any other police that decide to come on board uh, dealing with all kinds of chaos and they could be dealing with positive and better things. And, uh, so, okay. it's uh, finally very, very close, which is why um, uh, Drake asked me to do this show. Uh, it's not a false alarm. It's been confirmed by several sources uh, globally. And um, although we will never give dates, so states come and go, uh, and it also alerts Cabal, but it is very, very imminent. And the minutes can have a range, and it's almost like the soon word and the two weeks worth, but it's imminent. And it could literally go. It's been, it, to tell you the truth, and Drake will support me on this, it's been imminent since, rarely, since April. Anything could have gone down in one day. There's certain elements of it, there's a, a different elements to it, there's different elements with the finances, there's different elements with, with, with other things that are going on. And it only takes one to go down, and that that could have got it could have been something to do with Germany and Europe. It could be the finances, a whole range of things that are closing in. The other things to look at is the markets, the closing in there, and bit by bit, 
uh, they're getting squashed into tighter and tighter corners and eventually there's going to be no corners left and they have to come out and that's when their, their time is up. Hopefully for their benefit uh, and for ours and for the plant it's peaceably and we can move forward uh, with uh, better lives for all on this planet. Not with 500 million slaves just for their benefit. No, all of us, there's room for a lot more people. There probably will be extra people visiting coming forward also. So there's plenty of food for everybody. There's plenty of resources for everybody. Once the new technology comes in, there'll be even more resources. Everything will be replenished. So all the people that are worried about climate change and putting trees down, there won't be a need for it. Because we won't have that. Uh, we will go, go away from that competitive edge where we have to do better than next door. We have to have a better house, or we have to have a better car, or a better job, or earn more money, or better clothes. All these control systems that are imposed on us. Well, my religion's better than yours, my God's better than yours. No, that's got to end. We have to end the competitive nature that's been imposed on us. And it's all about service to others, not service to self. And then everyone is, has the same entitlement as everybody else. No, it's not because, well, I'm, they're not getting nothing because they, they, they uh, don't work. They will be encouraged to work the same as everybody else. <laughs> and, and no discrimination, another control system. That has to end. And uh, once everyone realizes that is nobody is more important than anybody else in this planet. As uh, I've often said, repeated saying of tonight, never put anyone above your own heart. Everyone has an important role on this planet, both to themselves and to others, and that is the way we will move forward with it. Well, i got a got something to ask everybody. Um, goes in conjunction with everything that's been stipulated in a short show. Um, John F. Kennedy said it best, I think, and this goes to what you really feel in, in terms of your patriotism to your country. And it don't matter what country. It matters your country. And here it is. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And just to be upfront, I'm asking for everybody to do the combination of pull together and be productive, be proactive in terms of thinking before you act and then acting correctly, irrespective as to what everything is going on around you or what people are saying. And I think we'll, we can come out of this all right. Yes, I agree. I'm just uh, dealing with them. Um, somebody who wants to come on for, uh, br briefly. So um, you, you, you want to carry on talking for a bit while I add it to the show? Okay. Um, the crux of it is this. Each and every last person in their bones at one point or another feels sort of a loyalty to the place within which they reside, be that a small neighborhood, uh, large city, state, or country, that loyalty uh, is not the <laughs> flag that needs the polit politics washed off of it, but what the flag really stands for, what America used to be and should have always been and can be once again. This is what I am striving for. We can restore our nation the respect for our nation. And I know for a fact, I've seen people um, scuffling to make sure that there's food to eat. I've been one of them. And I know what it takes. Whether you bleed or not, or it hurts or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you get the job done so that you can feed your family. <coughs> Same thing is true of patriotism. However, what can you be patriotic to is the question. Well, you can be patriotic to the idea that America can be and always should have been the greatest nation
population on the planet, and that we can serve the highest form of morality known to anyone simply by getting it done. And I know that the American people have the guts, they've already had the glory, uh, to make the changes necessary, not just in themselves, but to reach out and say, let's go. Everybody know what you're talking about. Everybody will be aware as to the direction needing to be taken. That all of the crookedness, all of the backbiting, all of the secret deals, all of the uh, invisible uh, agents will no longer be needed, let alone tolerated. I think we put up with enough of that. How about we uh, open the curtains, <laughs> let a little sunshine on it, and see what it does? And that's basically uh, what I was looking at. Craig, can you give us a brief description of what the red light entails and what the green light entails for the benefit of new members? Yes, the, the, um, the red light will be a notification to all those uh, directly involved with the militia. When that's given, I will uh, expect each and every last militia to be on alert for a contact from uh, an officer within the military. And I don't know which. It could be anybody. Uh, Marines, Navy, Army, Air Force, anyone. But a direct contact. And that particular person will be specifically um, oriented to tactics and logistics within a certain area. Most probably the local area where the militia is located. In other words, you may there may be several contacts. Uh, you may be asked to watch. You may be asked to, you know, keep your ear to the ground and wait. We'll call you if we need you. Nobody knows exactly what it will be or how far it will go. The second part is the green light. The green light is the financial freedom that we have open uh, and secured the collateral accounts and that um, we will proceed with things such as NACERA. Uh, we will go back to the um, constitutional provisions made for uh, the manner in which uh, not only finances are operated, but also we operate ourselves uh, in terms of moralities, in terms of law, in terms of all of this. Uh, it's not going to happen. It ain't going to be sudden. It's going to take a few days. Get that under your belt. Get your head around it. However, some of the things put in motion, as I stipulated earlier in the show, um, they're going to come to such a culmination, they can no longer be ignored. Not by mainstream media, let alone those that it's directed towards. The problem, as I see it, is everybody keeping it cool, maintaining, not allowing uh, excitement to um, take over their better judgment, um, not allowing themselves to be caught up in something that they had no part in, normally, anyway. So... Okay. All right. Okay, Drake. Um, we have another guest coming on who wants to say something to the listeners. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Grammy. This is great, Grammy J. I want you all to know that I love you, and I've missed many of you who know me so well, just as much as you say that you miss me. I would just like to say what I've always said. May the great spirit bless you and your loved ones, and this planet, and beyond. Thank you, Grammy. Thank you. You're welcome. You doing okay, Grammy? Oh, Can yes. I'm, I'm very happy, and what a wonderful show this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Right. Um, that's just about it. Uh, we've got a final song to play. Uh, I can't find the one that you want uh, at the moment, Granny, but we'll have, we'll have a different song that may, the people may enjoy. So, uh, do I you want to say... Yeah? How about Get Her Done? <laughs> <laughs> Get Her Done. 60 seconds to close. We sure will. We sure will. I've heard that a couple times. Yes. Just a few. 
Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to the one uh, where it says we got it done. Right. Uh, we'll be back for maybe Saturday, depending on certain things coming up. If not, uh, we'll be back next Wednesday as normal. Um, hopefully, it'll be before we might have further updates. We all look forward to that. And uh, I'm probably going to bed now. It's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, oh my god. Uh, I'll say good night. It's good night to me, Thomas Williams. Good night from Grammy, and thank you for coming on. And good night from Drake, and thanks to Drake for giving us that information. Alrighty, it just turned to Saturday um, Central Time, and that's all for that. The original uh, broadcast for this that um, we just played, <coughs> excuse me, was on Wednesday. Um, so that would have been Wednesday, the 24th of September. 2014 today is now, according to the Central Time Zone anyway, um, Saturday the 27th. Um, we're going to open up um, the conversation here with Jay and Rich, so uh, you two can feel free to unmute. Um, I'm going to start off by saying, and well, <coughs> reminding people, that whatever information Drake has and has been expressing, you got to remember, he's taking that information, processing that through the filter of his personality, his individuality, his own belief systems about reality. Therefore, the only thing he can express, regardless of whatever information he's received, is his perception of that information. I want to remind people that he's an equal human being, you know, to me, to Jay, to Rich, to everybody else on the planet, his perspective is no more or less valid than anybody else's um, perspective out there. So don't take uh, any of what anybody says as an authority. Information is not your authority. Believe nothing, disbelieve nothing, and, you know, open your mind and view reality as a cake, not a light switch. Not the this or that dichotomy, but just kind of look at everything in parallel how all the pieces of the puzzle, you know, interact and see where it goes. Um, my personal feelings on this so far, um, while I can state that the whole um, withdrawal um, of the uh, Arabs and Russia and China from the petrol dollar, that, I think that would definitely be good cause for Obama to pull the little tantrum that he pulled and... Um, for Congress to go take their little nap, and then for the nice run of censorship that, you know, hit my channel, and, you know, cause so, because my old channel's gone, <laughs> and now I got the new one, um, that hit my channel, um, even Vinny Eastwood's channel got canned like a couple of weeks ago, I don't know what events that was in, in alignment with, but he got slammed, and... Right before we started on this show, Jay Larson was also telling me something about the Attorney General suddenly stepping down. That's interesting as hell. So all this stuff happening in, in synchronicity, you know, Obama sissy fit in Syria, and the petrodollar, and so on and so forth, all this internet censorship, da-da-da-da-da. I can definitely see this domino effect culmination. Um, so looking at that data, I have to say, well... I'm definitely observing a bunch of things happening improbably and in parallel. I can't make a claim and say, oh yeah, this is definitely happening because of this. Oh yeah, this is definitely happening because of that. No, I can't say that. I don't know. But I'm definitely observing multiple simultaneous patterns, and I def definitely think it's really interesting. And my two cents about it is no more or less valid than anybody else's. So, um, Jay Rich, take the soapbox. Well, I'll be the first guy to speak if Jay's not going to speak if he's here. Um, <clears throat> I'll mute my mic now in order to um, cut down on any sort of distortion factors here. I don't want you feeding back into yourself. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, I agree with his opinions. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be that exactly finite. I mean, you know, there's no real way to tell. Uh, you know, anything could happen, you know, when it hits the fan, you know. 
as the old saying goes, you know, the best battle plan is only good until first engagement, you know. Uh, you could you can have this long plan all written out and, you know, added up in your mind that it's going to be this way when this happens, kind of like a chess game, and then when the first, you know, engagement happens, you know, that plan goes out the window. So, you know, you've got to have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, a plan E, a plan F, etc., so on and so forth, you know. And especially in a survival scenario, you know, all of those quote-unquote people that, you know, are there in the crucial areas that need to be done, like, you know, engineers and specialists to keep the power plants going and the water purification centers going could all get shot and killed, you know, in a raid or, you know, something, something's going to, you know, it's not just going to be, you know, oh, well, it's going to be this way all the way to the end, and there's not going to be, you know, um, any changes or foul-ups or problems or, you know, anything, any number of things could happen. I mean, you know, it could go like that, and that's best-case scenario, or it could go, you know, complete into the south, shit hit the fan, you know, problematic, nothing's working right, you know, and we're going back to, you know, early, you know, late 19th century technology in terms of, you know, trying to survive because all the infrastructure gets destroyed through, you know, riots and war and, you know, whatever else. You know, there's no accounting for what could happen in such a scenario. I mean, there's all kinds of different variables you could come up with. But um, I agree with what he's saying. I mean, we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. You know, we need to be on the lookout. We need to keep our eyes peeled. You know, pay attention to the news, discern information, you know, process it in our brains, and just research everything you hear about. Research everything. Make sure, you know, that there's, you know, confirmed sources of that information, that it's accurate, that it's not, you know, just a big crock of shit made up by some idiot somewhere on either side, you know. Right now, it's a crucial information war, and we're getting to a crossroads in world history. And I have a lot of hope. I don't. I don't think you know humanity is just going to take two steps into a thousand years of darkness. I think humanity is in a re is in for a real treat. And you know, the awakening process is happening. I'm seeing it more and more every day. I'm starting to see people, you know, are getting the idea. They're starting to wake up, you know, far more than I've ever seen, you know, previously. You know, people are starting to realize that it's bad out there, you know, just by, you know, you turn on the TV or, you know, see the news updates on your phone, you know, 12 homicides in one day, and you're told that's just the way it's supposed to be, and you go and look back to your childhood or look back to yesteryear and go, I don't remember America being that way, you know, 12 black on white homicides or white on black homicides or purple on yellow or whatever color, I don't care. You know, I don't remember there being 12 homicides in a day and, you know, police brutality and people blowing holes in doors with shotguns, you know, and doing drug raids and throwing people on hoods of cars and beating them until they're bloody pulps and need to go to the medical room. I don't remember that being America. Do you, do you think that it's as imminent as Drake says? Because Drake seems to imply that all this is starting to go down now, that the first domino has already been pushed. And the only thing I could see that might possibly, looking at it logically from my perspective, be a sign that perhaps maybe it has been pushed is, again, just all the multiple simultaneous weirdness. Um... I mean, in the more esoteric side of things, it happened just before the fall equinox. It's happened during all this energetic activity. I mean, I'm very energetically sensitive myself, and I've been feeling the intensity of that and seeing the synchronicities within that. Um, nobody has to believe that statement that I just gave. That's just me being honest about you know my surroundings and my life. And believe me or not, I don't really care. Um, but I've noticed that. I mean, I've noticed, you know, all this ISIS bullshit starts to come down, and 
you know, Obama's having his little temper tantrums, and they go into Syria, and Congress takes a little freaking nap, and then there's this whole big, you know, censorship, you know, sweep on freaking Google and YouTube because, uh, you know, I've been researching on it, and my channel is uh, my previous channel is not the only one that's been been fucked with. There have been channels for individual videos were just taken down without warning, no DMCA, nothing, just poof, gone. And, um, you know, all just this, this incredible sudden intensity of all this multiple simultaneous weird bullshit. So I can see, looking around, that something appears to be building as far as I can tell because I, there's observable data that I'm looking at and things happening in parallel and things intensify, you know, both on the energetic level, personal synchronicity, synchronicities out in the world, world events, news media, people's channels getting fucked with and, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this big fractal cluster fuck within reality so I can look at that and just like I look at a tree, you know, I can say, yeah, I see something there. It's like I look at a tree and... Yeah, there's, there's a tree there. I can't tell you how exactly how many ants are in the damn thing or exactly how many worms are crawling under it, but I can look at it and say, yeah, you know, it's a fucking tree. So I'm looking at this, and yeah, you know, that's, there's this freaking, uh, you know, proverbial tree here, and I'm looking at it. I don't claim to understand all of it, but I can see what I can see, you know, and that's just my perspective on it. So I see that there's some, you know, some signs that maybe perhaps... This might be the same sort of stuff Drake's talking about, but I can't say it's a definitive fact. That, oh, yeah, this this proves Drake right. Oh, yeah. No, I can't say that. Cause I don't freaking know, you know? Oh, well, yeah. Um, and to the point of uh, Drake saying that, you know, this could be the domino. I mean, there, there have been so many uh, warning signs, quote-unquote, that this could be it. This could be the imminent one, and you know, it gets a little bit tense for a while, and then it kind of cools down a little bit, you know. It, I mean, there, there's just so many things to factor in to whether or not this could be, you know, the real beginning of, you know, what history will call as World War III. You know, we're, we've been in the lead-up years for the last, you know, 70-plus years since the end of World War II. And hard to say. I mean, you know, there have been so many warning calls saying this is it, it's imminent, it's coming, you know, the globalists are coming, the globalists are coming, the globalists are coming, and nothing has come of it. And, you know, to say that right now this could be it, I mean, this just could be another, you know, overblown, overhyped, you know, piece of propaganda that came from somewhere, you know, for fear-mongering purposes, you know, just disinformation yet again, trying to keep people distracted, or it could be legitimate. I just don't know. You know, uh, like I said, I've seen this type of stuff before. I've heard Alex Jones go on, you know, oh, it's imminent, it's coming, you know, here it comes, you know, and then, it, you know, the proverbial uh, death angel passes over and, well, you're still alive and you're still there and, you know, nothing's come of it yet. I mean, if, you know, there was the fear of nuclear Armageddon and, you know, for the last 40 years of the Cold War, 50 years, actually. Well, the, dif the difference for me is, is that, you know, I've been listening to Drake for about two years, and he's never been all like, oh, yeah, absolutely, definitely, right now, right now, right now. As a matter of fact, people have been beyond irritated with him because... You know, he's like, you know, he he's been very general and like, no, I can't I can't say a specific time. He can only give his opinions on whether or not he feels it might be in two weeks or whatever, blah blah blah. But you know, he can't give any specific time, and that you know, he'll only give a specific time when he feels he knows it's uh, you know going down and whatever. So in two years of listening to Drake, he has not pulled. And Alex Jones, he's not been like, yeah, yeah, it's happening right now, right now, and oh yeah, I can get prepared right now, it's going on right now. He hasn't gone all, all like that, you know. So this is, you know, in over two years, this is the first time that I've ever heard him give this sense of right nowness, and simultaneous to his announcement, there's all this other cluster fucking shit <laughs> that I'm 
observing in my life and the world stage, so on and so forth, energetically, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all culminating at the exact same time. So I really can't write that off to coincidence. Coincidence, maybe, things which coincide, but not coincidence. I can't, you know, just close my lying eyes and go, oh, no, I'm just going to ignore that because it's inconvenient, because it's more convenient to think that Drake is just full of crap. So I'm going to ignore anything that might even slightly hint that there's even a little bitty chance that he might be right about this. No, I can't ignore that. I just have to put all the cards on the table and say, I can observe that there are things going on. I don't claim to know exactly how they're connected. I don't claim to know all the details of what's what. I can only say that I observe the tree. I know I do not know how many birds are in it, how many bugs are on it, and how many worms are under it, <laughs> you know? Oh, well, yeah, you just clarified my point yet again, me hitting face on desk. Um, yeah, I'm not saying that you couldn't be right, and I'm not saying you couldn't be wrong, but I've heard this a million times before. I've, I've heard the, you know, the the doomsday, you know, prophecy, oh, what's going to happen? It's coming. The sky's falling, you know, and it, it very well, there very well could be big event, a major event coming, and I'm not saying that there won't be, you know, but it just, I, I, I can't confirm or deny, you know, the information I heard tonight. It's information that I've known about for a long time, you know, dealing with the, you know, the prepper and survivalist militia community, you know, all of that stuff circulates around kind of like a broken record, you know, we're all ready for it, we've all kind of psychologically prepared ourselves for what we need to do, you know, if and when. A situation like that occurs, you know, where we go, what we do, what our task is, you know, to keep order and, you know, yeah. do what we need to do in our community. But I do also like that Drake does not fear porn. Right? He's not presenting it as, oh my god, it's going to be all out war and the sky's fall. Well, no. Well, no. He's he's giving, he's just giving a simple task of directions. It's kind of like, I, I almost viewed that broadcast kind of like something similar to a British broadcast of French resistance in World War II. You know, the chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. Quote, uh, Red Dawn, you know. It's just it's just a simplistic, you know, this is what we need to do, you know. We need to do it in such a fashion that it's not going to invoke chaos. We need to bring order to potential chaos, which is respectable. But... Yet again, it's along the same lines of, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, you know. And I can't confirm nor deny that he's correct or incorrect, yet again. I'm curious as to whether or not Jay is still here. I mean, he's in the chat, but did he fall asleep or... Because his mic is still muted. No, I, I'm still here. Uh, oh, I'm just yeah. waiting. I'm just okay. waiting. Okay, uh, basically how I feel about it, the, inte the integrity of the person, uh, you got to remember Drake w was involved in the intelligent community when he was in the service, so he still has friends in places like that. Uh, he has other friends as well, uh, but it's getting close to the time. Uh, things are breaking down. We're getting all kinds of domino effects of other things happening and uh, bankers de de deaths to uh, uh, the uh, attorney general re uh, resigning and uh, you know it, it, it's, it's not a matter that when exactly this is this was just to, to let people know they should get ready because it's that close and uh, it's not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, but it could happen at any time. You know, that's how things run. You know, it, uh, things just trigger on their own, so to speak, when they get to a certain mass aggregation. Um, and he's given the shout out for people to be ready. And because of that, uh, he'd rather see people well prepared 
and calm because it's when hysteria happens is when uh, people die, and that's the way it should be. Uh, I, I can feel the energy and stuff. It, it's going to happen very shortly, uh, but very shortly could be too much from now. Uh, it, dep it depends on certain things. You know, there, there's a lot of manipulation going on on both sides. If the uh, the cabal makes over as an oversight of something, it could happen quicker. You know, if they don't cover all their bases, you know, it's like playing chess. It's not over until it's over. But once they start making the arrests, you can believe that it's happening. Uh, uh, in Europe, in the last couple of days, there have been a thousand arrests um, dealing with uh, black market stuff in the European Union. And the U.S. has been helping out with that. Uh, that's some of the stories that you don't hear. So they could be starting it on already, and you wouldn't know it. They may be taking those guys in and getting intelligence from them to help, help figure out where their next uh, placement should be. You know, uh, you're working in a world of intelligence. Everything's not generally done at once. You know, things, uh, small things happen that you hardly even notice that gives them the information that they need to start the big thing. All you're getting right now is a bunch of small fry, and real incidents happening. Um, the main, main thrust of it has happened is time to get ready, though. Um, Drake is very precautious for people because uh, people have a tendency to jump the gun, to get emotional upset, and think when you do things like that and act strictly on emotion and hysteria, uh, deaths occur. People don't think right when they're in hysteric situations. So it's, what he's doing is helping people get ready both physically and mentally prepared for the thing to happen. And uh, that's when just the start of the work after there's a lot of work to go be, have to be done after they uh, after this thing happens. You know you got you got to change the entire educational system and everything else. You, you got to start from the bottom bottom and work your way back up. There's a lot of things that need correcting that if, uh, the information that we we have, uh, we, we don't know our own history because we've been lied to about that even. So there's a, you know, things are things are happening very subtly right now and this is just a, uh, a wake-up call to get prepared, get mentally prepared as well as physically to have the things that you need because you may not, if you go next week, you may not be able to get the things that you need. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's always good to be prepared, and I've never said don't be prepared, but yet again, as you stated, it is a world of intelligence, and every bit of information should be taken with absolute scrutiny just as much as it should be to pay attention to information with absolute caution and take it seriously, you know, because you don't know what you're hearing, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a very dangerous world out there, and we're dealing with a real situation that everybody in the community, in the Patriot community, has known has been coming for a very long time. And, yeah, you know, they've been playing that, that guessing game for the last 70 years. You know, people have been prepared for it, preparing for it since the Cold War, you know. And whether it was dealing with the Russians back in the day, which wasn't going to happen, you know, but of course people didn't know it at the time. Or, you know, nowadays people realizing it's not any specific nationality, but the globalists who fund the chaos. Um, you know, 
there just has to be some real top priority taken and anybody you know even even if you think it's a crock of shit you should still take it seriously I mean it's not you, people aren't just saying it playing around like oh yeah you know here comes it's it's gonna happen ooh, with a hint of sarcasm it's not something to joke around about you know because it very well might there's just as much a chance it might happen as it might not happen it just might be another false warning and all I'm stating is I've seen a lot of these messages that were very similar and most of them have just been you know, warnings more or less you know but yeah, the the world the world stage has definitely been very interesting the last week and a half. It's been very very interesting. Um, I had a trucker come in this morning. I worked at a truck stop, and he was all excited. You know, he was all jumping up and down with real uh, emphasis on you know about being ready. You know, arm yourselves, et cetera, so on and so forth. You know, some. Uh, guy beheaded a woman in Washington D.C. or something, and you know, I don't know, but he was he was all concerned about ISIS and you know the impending threat that ISIS might have to the U.S. Which personally, I don't think they pose much of a threat. But anyway, I mean, any information there is credible just as much as it isn't, and you know, it should be taken with heavy consideration. And that's just kind of my my take on it. Yeah, I definitely think that um, people should view information just as information because, um, in my opinion, you know, we've been brainwashed um, growing up as, as little kids, you know, and, and forward to take information itself as our authority. Oh, that science book is your authority. It's right. You must conform to that. That Bible is your authority. That person has a PhD. So listen to them. Blah blah blah. The only problem is, is all these things were written by by human beings that were observing things to the best of their ability. Um, the people who wrote the Bible were having very spiritual experiences, and to the best of you know, their ability to um, write down their understandings of those experiences. They did the best they could. They were doing what, in the uh, the New Age uh, context, uh, what people would call channeling. That's really what the authors of uh, the Bible were doing, or as um, Jesus called it, uh, pulling the Holy Spirit inside of you, or whatever terminology uh, you know you want to use um, physics might say uh, tapping into the zero point field um, however you want to look at it it's different buzzwords for the same thing um, just like whether or not you want to call the globalists um, you know the Illuminati or the ball or the the powers that be or the powers who think they be or the powers that were or whether you just want to call them up gang of crooks that have been screwing us in the ass for a long time with that are in competition with each other and trying to consolidate power, treating the global stage like it's a big, you know, board game of risk and you know, duking it out with each other for ultimate control of the planet. I think it's probably easier for most people's uh, minds to just be almost like a mafia type of thing. It's just a bunch of gangs and thugs and you know, a lot of people working with thugs, with thugs, they don't know any better. And other people, um, military contractors and, you know, Nazis and whatever else that are knowingly doing uh, what they're doing. And, of course, you have the news media people that are more mind-controlled zombies than uh, the rest of the sheep. Uh, they really actually believe is coming out of out of their own mouths, and anybody who tries to, to tell them other otherwise, you see their arrogant reactions. Shut up! You're you're stupid. Shut up! You don't know anything. Shut. And you see this like on on the mainstream, uh, you know, news talks and stuff. I'm looking at this shit like, oh my god, what are you people three? <laughs> Do 
these are the types of people that, you know, people want to view as an authority. These little three-year-olds having dick-wagging contests on television, well, whatever. But I don't think anybody should view any person or any information as authority. I think people should use their intuition, use discernment, think critically, analyze information, observe information as information, not as a, a god over you. And don't try to fit yourself in the box. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I should be this because the, if I fit myself in this box. Mm -hmm. I'm a uh, Demican, Republicrat, Libservative, Carnivoral. It's all the fucking same, right? So I'll kind of pause that there and let somebody else speak. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll pause right there and let somebody else speak. Is there somebody else who wants to speak? Jay? Oh, Rich just dropped out. That's right. Oh, now Rich is back. Welcome back, Rich. Yeah, good call. Anyway, um, I'm off my soapbox for the moment. Anything you want to add, Rich? Uh, nothing beyond what I already said. I mean, you know, it's just information that, you know, you should take no more seriously than you should, you know. No, what's the word? You shouldn't take the information anymore um, into consideration than you should to just dismiss it as being, you know, possibly just another thing to get not concerned about, but, you know, given the recent hype in the, in the political and physical stage of things, you know, with all of the, the uh, unconstitutional actions that have been going on over in Syria, the illegal wars and everything else, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to keep your eyes peeled, and especially here in the last decade at least, you know, decade or longer, you know, it, you know, paying attention wasn't a bad thing. Paying attention never is a bad thing, you know, but uh, in the last 10 years, it's been really, things have been getting quicker and faster and, you know, the rate at which the world political stage of us, has, as we know it, has been moving, has gotten faster over the years, and it's just gotten quicker and quicker and quicker to the point of almost, well, where we're at now, just pretty much insanity. But, um, yeah, I've, I've got nothing else much to say. I mean, it's just, you know, just view it as information and, you know, discern from, from it what you can and use the logical points that you think apply to you as an individual and go on from there. In my opinion, the best way for people to do that is to um, get rid of that which normally gets in their way, and that being emotional investment in any particular belief system that mm -hmm. makes them think that they don't have the right to change their mind that makes them think they have to fit themselves into these boxes and say, this box is the only thing that's real, I'm going to defend that box to the death. Because a lot of these boxes are really damning and condemning. Like, look at the people, for example, who have the mentality of uh, rich get richer, poor get poor, I'm just poor little old me, I never get my way. Boo hoo hoo and all this is typical attitude society teaches most of us to have, right? Only problem is that when we're looking on ourselves with such low self esteem and looking out at the world with such contempt, I mean, we could have these badass talents that we could put to use in the world to make it a better place, and we won't even know it. We could be utilizing these talents generally and naturally. And everybody else looks at us and goes, wow, you know, you're really good at that. You're a good uh, musician. You're a good uh, music maker. You're a good speaker. 
um, you know, oh, well, you're pretty and have a good voice and people like listening to you. So, you know, if you get up there and, and share information about the truth of this or that or whatever, people are going to listen or, you know, so on and so on. The people being given these observations and these compliments are looking at them like they're on crack. Like me? Lowly little me? Oh, well, you're really kind to say all this, but you're really exaggerating. You know, lowly little me is not good at anything. You know, I'm just, I'm just doing what lowly little me does. All my little unimportant lowly little me stuff. And when we view ourselves like that, and we view the world with contempt, and the only thing we know how to do is have emotional investments in certain belief systems, our own miserable lack of self-worth is actually a belief system that people defend death. People don't want to sit there and feel miserable and depressed and whatever, but they have a belief in that being the only real reality and they will defend that belief to the frickin death and they will argue and they will battle and they will look for any excuse to stick with that although thankfully now with this um, awakening process more and more people are awakening you know to their to their belief systems and and the dichotomies and you know, all this new information and it's creating cognitive dissonance and they're forced to look at themselves and go, you know, this belief system that I have about myself, is it really actually correct or is it not? And then there, there's this part of themselves rising inside of themselves that is aligning more with their, their true authenticity and integrity that's waging war, you know, kind of like the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other, like in the old, you know, like Tom and Jerry cartoons and shit. You know, we have that sort of a process going on. We've got half of ourselves battling the other half of ourselves, and the only way for that battle to stop is for both sides of ourselves to, um, you know, to shake hands and make peace, and, you know, the angelic side says to the devil side, I'm using archetypes, not being literal, the dark side, the Darth Vader side. Okay, well, you can whine in your corner, and that's okay. I don't have to take that to any seriousness, but you have the right to go whine in the corner of the back of my mind and and, and talk all this damning low self-esteem stuff, and I can look at that and observe that and let you do that. Well, this side of me says, well, you know, I'm being offered the shit burger by Darth Vader, and I'm being offered the hamburger by the, these other new choices of revelation. I'm not going to see the shit burger as something victimizing me and making me eat it anymore. I'm owning that, and now I can choose the hamburger. So then you can go and experiment with the hamburger. That sort of thing. So you kind of have to unwind these belief systems and learn how to not have this emotional investment in it, because if you're emotionally invested then anything that is outside of that box automatically will trigger fight or flight. And it is biologically and neurologically a fact that when your body is triggered into um, fight or flight, basically the, um, the cognitive abilities of brain function in regards to discernment, critical thinking, problem solving, so on and so forth, they go to shit. And all of your energy is channeled into, you know, the muscle system. It goes from the viscera into the muscle system. And, you know, your body thinks it's about to, you know, go, you know, uh, tackle a wild ape or, or run from a lion or whatever. It's, you know, it's, it's ready to run and box. So the, the systems of the brain that are responsible for higher thinking... They, they just go, you know, straight into the toilet, and the internal immune system goes into the toilet, too, because um, the energy is not being redirected to internal immune functions. So that's why people who are always under constant stress are usually sick all the time and feeling low energy and feeling like shit and always getting colds and always getting flus and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to kind of 
un unravel that clusterfuck inside of you, deal with the cognitive dissonance, and then you'll know how to look at information as information and not take it as an authority. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then all you're going to do is you're going to descend to the death those belief systems that you're emotionally invested in, <coughs> and you're not going to <coughs> excuse me <coughs> allow for any sort of change of mind. You're not going to allow yourself to say, oh, well, you know, I believed this, but I got this new information here that seems to kind of make more sense, so I'm going to explore this. No, you're going to be like, fuck you, fuck that new information, I'm sticking to this. Kind of like how even the truth movement fights itself like that. Yeah, man, those those planes were FEMA jets going into the towers, man. The fuck you, no, they weren't, man. There was no planes. It was all CGI, man. CGI, you conspiracy nut. Hey, you're a conspiracy nut, too. Who the fuck you call conspiracy nut? Idiot. Oh, yeah, well, well, I'm an intellectual atheist. Oh, fuck you, atheist. I'm a Christian. At least I'm not going to hell like you, fucker. And it totally, you know, the whole, like, truth movement, like, collapses in on itself with all this divide-and-conquer petty bickering. It's like, hey, fuck nuts, you're all acting like the elites, douchebags. Like, up. <laughs> Dick wagon contest. Anything to add, Jay Rich? No. No, nothing much to that. Yeah. Uh, not much. I don't. I don't wag my dick anymore. It's getting too old. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Everything's just uh, to the ego is a is a pecker contest. So once you get out of the ego and just go with uh, just data, and it don't matter who's right or wrong, all you want is the the answer or the best answer that'll work for that moment. Then then be satisfied with that when things change. When the data changes and the moment's different, it becomes to a totally different uh, answer. So, it's oh, not by a big... the way, um, speaking of speaking of paradigm boxes and stuff, um, he's on a bit of a delay, probably about two or three minutes back of our current uh, position and conversation. But Kristen, our mutual friend Kristen, Kristen is actually listening right now. Oh. He's kind of undecided as to whether or not he wants to just keep listening or join us at the moment. So, anybody want to say any words of encouragement for joining us? I mean, I think that she would have a lot of valuable insight to um, add into this conversation. But again, just like I was explaining before, even though she's an awesome badass and she's wise and she's great and she's... There's just her insights are freaking phenomenal, and I love what she has to say about things. Um, you know, again, just like the rest of us, you know, you tell her that, and she's looking at herself like, well, who am I? You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being me. You know, what's so freaking great about that? <clears throat> so she's kind of um, in the one I have a feminine view on what we've been talking about. <clears throat> Yeah, no kidding. Let's get a chick view up in here. Come on, Kristen. Kristen, come on. I want to meet you. <laughs> you want to meet me. And by meet, he means M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T, just to clarify. Yeah, Dick's a killer. <laughs> <laughs> Dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Love that music video. Everybody out there, search uh, DJ RX, Dick is a killer. Hilarious video. Yeah. So, Kristen, wanna wanna kind of come out and play here, and you know, give us the female perspective on uh, on all this stuff, or and you know, it'd be really cool if she would come on and, and share that that female wisdom about the um, <clears throat> masculine testosterone dick wagging contest that's happening out in the world right now. I I personally would appreciate some female insight in this. Fucking um, Google Hangout. How about you guys? Yep. <laughs> Chris, yep, you yep. better get on or I'm leaving. 
I'm just going to leave and I'm not going to come back on because I'm going to be too disappointed that you didn't show up. Oh, you better not say that. She might use that as an excuse to bash herself. And you don't, you no, don't... she can't bash herself. She's a beautiful, pretty, smart, intelligent, awesome, amazing, cool, awesome, super awesome, did I say awesome person who needs to stop bashing herself and stop playing the bullshit game and tell her mind to go, f or tell her ego, for that matter, who's addicted to depression to go F itself eternally. Well, she needs to show love to her ego and let it go cry in the corner so that the other part of herself can say, okay, you can cry in the corner over there, but I'm not obligated to join you. I'm going to go over here with uh, Rich David J and have some awesome conversation. And, um, oh, she's saying she can't get on for long. Well, that's okay. However long you can, you can join us is fine. It's not a, a dick-wagging contest about... Who can spend the most time on Google Hangout? You know, it's just, you know, however long you want to come on, uh, you know, get up here and share your insights and, and your wisdom and, you know, give uh, give the, these three boys here the feminine take on things. You know, get that female energy going, that perspective. She's like cracking up in text. She's sending me messages laughing and... All this and that. So I think we're it's because, it's because she knows it's true. It when a woman is laughing about it, they know it's true, and they exactly. don't want to admit it. And the ego is going to sit there, and you know, she can either do what I said or what you just said. There are essentially <laughs> two manifestations of the same exact thing. She just Christine. needs to either do it or do it. Kristen, you can either eat the shit burger and act like it's making you eat it, or you can go the other direction and eat the hamburger. Nummy, nummy hamburger, shit burger, not so good, but you have the right to pick whichever you want. Nah, uh, cheeseburger's better. Just throw a big, yeah. big thing of cheese on there. It's, it's a smorgasbord tonight. You can have all you can eat. There you go. Just got to make a choice of what you want to eat. Yeah, and the political dick wagging contest has brought the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the cat. Yeah. We got uh, Kissinger, who's a dick, and Obama, who's a pussy, and you know. Military, military men are dumb animals who are only made to follow orders. First New World Order. In the Kissinger. She said she's downloading the plugin. Looks like she's going to join us, at least for a few minutes. She's downloading the Google Hangout plugin. You better join the... He is going to come out and anally rape all of you. You might want to look out. He is very quiet, evil. <laughs> is that not the I best... I have Kermit the Frog here interviewing... Uh, Henry Kissinger. So, um, how exactly did it feel when you took your large sausage and pounded it into Obama's soft, wet cock over and over again, up his asshole and down his throat? How did that feel to totally rape the president of the United States? Well, he is a dumb, stupid black baboon. He does not know very much. To say the least, he is a puppet. I can put my hand up his asshole and I can play with his mind. He's very easy to marry. He's a crazy, crazy idiot. I'm not very impressed with the United States. I can't wait to financially screw it over, which I am in the process of doing so via blackmail Western Union money transfers. And uh, how will this how will, how will the how the situation with the uh, petrodollar affect your Vaseline supply that you use with Obama's aid? I'm the New World Order. I'm immune to any pitiful things that the civilian can come up with to try to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh! Yeah, is that is not is that not the best <laughs> sounding Kissinger voice you've ever heard? I could make fun of him all day. I could put him in the same room next to me, and I could make fun of him. I could sit <laughs> in front of him. I could piss him off. I could make him have fat, stupid, ugly pig bodyguards of his come up try to arrest me. I could. Uh 
my yeah, he, he, I could he, he, ruin he, he, he him. Dana, dude, you can have Dana Carvey do more stuff than you do with Kissinger. I fucking screwed him over. Literally. <laughs> Jeez. Quite angry oh. you are. <laughs> Amusing it is. I'm sure Chris. Not with the good side of the force, are you? <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, so hey, Yoda on Star Wars. I noticed you kept telling Luke that uh, cum is good food. Um, I take it you have personal experience with it. Didn't that way, I don't. Yeah, because you were saying, come, good food, come, judge me by my size, do you? <laughs> I suppose this is more entertaining than the Jeopardy theme song as we wait for it to be right. Kristen, get on here, here soon. What is taking you so long? It is a long download plugin. I'm purposefully making the download plugin go very slow. Because I'm Henry Kissinger, and I have a sausage up my butt. She uh, said she's still listening to us while she's waiting for the plug -in. Is she laughing her ass off? I hope she is, because if she is, that makes me happy. I'm sure she will type in text the laughing my ass off or something to that effect, too. Unless, of course, the plug will finish it first, he pops in and goes, Hey guys, I'm here! Hey, boo -boo. you're smarter than the average man, hey? Okay. She said Jeopardy has me crackled. So we, we know where uh, she is on the stream there. So he's listening while the plugin is downloading. Because obviously, the first time you go into a hangout on a computer, you click to go into the hangout, then, then it's like, hey, end user, fuck you, you don't have the plugin. Let's download that bitch right now. But then it downloads, and after that, then it takes you into the hangout. Waiting for that little download to finish, and then it's going to like, inject her into this chat, like Mr. Jackson Mandu into Obama's direct. I'm the Terminator. Is your name Kristen Meyer? We must go back in time to stop Obama in Kenya. We must go back in time and stop Obama from the To do the job or now. Miss, what's that happening? Miss, a rip. The Trial of Republic. I don't know. I'm bored. Because Kristen's taking too long. God, he gave me a board. Well, she'd be here already, if not for, like, this download, like, being so down. Dang, Kissinger just must be on here listening tonight. He must be pissed off. I hope he is. I hope he's human. I hope he's about ready to have a heart attack and die. What is she on for? Come Chris, on. you have to dial into your net access? Or are you dialing up 1900 kiss to your sausage or something? To, you know, <sighs> connect to the, to the net? Must be doing dial up.
your 50 fax machines before you get the connection you want. Said, man, that's some slow meta access. LOL. And Jay has disappeared. I don't know if he'll be back or not. He probably got tired of the noise. Or maybe it's just her computer. She is running Microsoft Windblows like most people. <laughs> I'm running Microsoft Windows 7, and it works just fine, Dave. I'm running Linux, and it works fucking perfect in every way. With a well, good for you. Um, Windows runs just fine, too, with Kaspersky antivirus. There's no problem. I'm getting a message that says, verifying net access. I don't, she, I, I don't think she, I recall a... Uh, a message from the Hangout plugin download thing that says maybe, maybe what maybe what she's but running is a Mac. It's one of those things that zips by so fast when you're on really high speed dial up with a functional computer. So seeing if she's in like slow mobile here, is she actually able to see that thing that normal can't be seen? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe she's on a Mac. Crash differently. Yeah, crash different. <laughs> That's the one thing I can at least say about Windows. Windows doesn't crash unless there's something seriously fucked up. Mm. That's just that's just the way it is, you know. That's interesting. Most people's experiences are Windows crashes if you look at it the wrong way. Well, people just have a bad bias towards Windows. If you give the bad bias towards Windows, you get what you give, you know. Macintosh is an acronym. Most applications crash if not the operating system hangs. Mm hmm. Yep, Macintosh killed my inner, inner child. Mac killed my inner child. I love that video. Yeah. Mm hmm. Little update and manager bouncing up and down in the corner of the screen like a Jack Russell fucking terrier. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh no, Al, it's not how to fight the zombie apocalypse. Not unless you're being allegorical, of course. I hope you're being allegorical with that video. Please, tell me not. Well, I was saying Kristen's like typing some stuff. Typing, 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 now not typing, typing, not typing, you know, that sort of thing. And, um. Yeah, I. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. Well, she she is attempting. I mean, she's you know, had it had downloading that plugin. I mean, I can't verify that you know the Windows install on the laptop she's been using has been acting like a little bitch. So it may just be giving her a bunch of shit at the moment. She may be doing the best she can to rectify that. Because her system has been really, like, hardcore on some kind of crack. <laughs> oh, and then, of course, I forgot about uh, the Ebola virus in uh, Africa. That's been going around lovely. Linux killed the Microsoft star. Linux killed the Microsoft star in my mind and in my car. Can't rewind, we've gone too far. Broadband came and broke your heart. <laughs> Please hold. The next available Kristen will be with you momentarily. 
Your Google Hangout session is important to us. Please hold the line. You are caller number 4,683 in queue to be answered. Your estimated hold time is 1 year, 6 months, 3 weeks, 4 days, 10 hours, 6 minutes, and 47 seconds. Please enjoy our really lame on hold music. I just asked her what's happened. Now it says that it's verifying installation. So it's still going through the um, the process here. It hasn't stopped. It's just doing it really, 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 really slow. But she is on her way. <laughs> it's just that piece of shit windows that's stopping her and slowing her down. She's in transit. sound you will hear when your laptop explodes. Precisely. Would you please quit, quit, quit uh, scratching your colon with your microphone there? Thank you. You're not colon call, okay? Yes, I am. You don't need this country being run by a bush and you get a call and thank you add that. We don't need it again. I feel free. I feel free. Dick, 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 dick. Give a kid a, I feel free. I feel free. Morning. Men from Mars have landed. The men from Mars have landed. I'm telling you, man, the war of the worlds is coming if Kristen's computer doesn't hurry up. <laughs> the Martians are outside the window. They're everywhere. She's getting here as best she can, man. Uh. Are you a fan of uh, Weird Al Yankovic at all? Yes. Hey, I you ever, am. Have you ever heard the song um, "Everything You Know Is Wrong"? Probably. <clears throat> kind of, um, kind of goes like this. <clears throat> I was driving on the freeway in the fast lane with a rabbit Wolverine in my underwear. When suddenly a guy behind me in the back seat puffed right up and cupped his hands across my eyes. 
I guess is it Uncle Frank or Cousin Louie? Is it Bob Joe or Walter? Could it be Bill or Jim or Red or Bernie or Steve? I probably would have kept on guessing, but about that time we crashed right into the truck. And as I'm laying bleeding there on the asphalt, finally I recognize the face of my hippie dealer who takes off his prosthetic lips and tells me everything you know is wrong. Black is white up is down and shown is long. And everything you thought that was just so important doesn't matter if everything you know is wrong. Just forget the words and sing along. All you need to understand is everything you know is wrong. I was walking to the kitchen for some golden grams when I accidentally stepped into an alternate dimension. And soon I was abducted by some aliens from space who kind of looked like Jamie Farr. They sucked up my internal organs and they took some Polaroids and said I was a darn good sport. And as a way of saying thank you, they offered to transport me back in time to any point in history that I'd care to go. And so I had them send me back to a <clears throat> Last Thursday night, so I could pay my phone bill on time. Just then, the floating disembodied head of Colonel Sanders started yelling, Everything you know is wrong. Black is white, up is down, and short is long. And everything you thought was just so important doesn't. Yeah, anyway, I can sing the rest, but fuck it, I don't feel like it. My voice is already wearing out enough as it is. Not too bad of a weird album. <laughs> Mr. Reach, are you still there? Or is Kissinger sticking penis in your butthole? Oh. oh my god, they killed Rich! You bastards! Oh. Oh, uh, uh, oh, um, uh, I, 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 let me be clear, uh, I did not, uh, kill Mitch, uh, uh, and, uh, pulling out of a rock was, uh, not my idea, uh, and, uh, 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 beer goes good with hot wings, uh, and, uh, Syria, uh, is a good idea because, uh, because, uh, Kissinger told me so, uh, and we will destroy ISIS in, uh, Syria, and, uh, oh shit, uh, I think, I think. You sound more like a soft voice redneck than Obama. <laughs> I can't pull off a black. I'm sorry. I don't care. But you get the idea. He's a dick. And let me be perfectly clear. I got two words for you. Predator drones. Anally raping predator drones. Please, my thanks will be on your lawn in 24 hours. Vladimir Putin walks up, pimp slaps him. Uh, It'd be funny if, like, right in the middle of an Obama speech, Putin runs, walks right across and looks at him and goes, Bitch, please, whack. <laughs> smack. <laughs> oh, she said, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, her internet's freaking out and it stopped and now it's getting back. She said, but that might be a belief system. <laughs> a little quantum mirror acting up again. I have noticed that even though Linux is like a system come down from heaven given to us by God himself, that even it tends to respond to states of being and will sometimes act a little weird when, um, you know, one's energy is out of balance and then when you get things back in alignment, it's like magic! The system's working again! All systems are go. So I personally noticed that. Uh -huh.
you say, I don't think it's going to happen, might be a belief system. I said, uh, is your focus on your enjoyment of talking with us or your fear of talking with us? <laughs> Honestly. She doesn't want to have her paradigm completely blown out of the water. Yes, wouldn't it be just so terrible for her to have it reflected that she's awesome and, you know, that her reality doesn't have to be all this misery stuff. And Dude, you're the light marine attack group and I'm the frickin' naval fleet. And blow her paradigm out of the water and we'll frickin', you know, frickin' sink the battleship of misery. It and needs to happen. But before you sh you sink the USS Misery, make sure Obama is on it first. Uh, he's kind of too busy playing golf right now. On the USS, no one gives a shit. <laughs> Which is in the middle of the Kenyan Sea somewhere. She's saying um, it's so weird because she's actually focusing on on enjoyment. Uh, she said she's genuinely excited. I, I said, um, but are you thinking that only mi misery is real and that um, anything good has to be roadblocked? She said, not consciously. I just told her, try rebooting the computer. I said, sometimes that magically fixes things. Her Windows machine is totally freaking jacked, though. She's probably going to try rebooting it now. And then maybe she'll have better luck when she brings Firefox or IE or whatever the hell it is back up on a newly booted session. And maybe that will help. I hope we're entertaining everybody else in YouTube land just as much as we have appeared to be entertaining Kristen. We will get the... Uh, I don't know. You know even, though, even, though the, even though the watch statistics are skewed, there's probably a lot of trolls out there who are probably sitting there bashing this whole entire thing. But I don't, I don't honestly care because those people are ignorant sacks of shit. And I just said it, so I don't care. Because I don't care. Because trolls are just, you know, they're so funny, but at the same time, they're so low in their... Hey, I yeah. love trolls. Not sexually, though, or anything. I mean, just saying, I love trolls. They're awesome. No, and now they're going to retort, He loves us anally! Because they're trolls. They're, they're like, they're like it, it goes in one ear, out the other, and it somehow gets anally <laughs> asterisked inside their brain. Somehow, everything you try to say, they, they turn against you. They're no, crafty little sorry, bastards. Sorry. Sorry, guys, I don't, but I think we do have someone here who loves you anally. Kissinger, are you still around? Oh, yes, I am always here for you. Mm. Why don't you come over here a little bit closer? Obama's a little troll. Kissinger loves him anally, so, you know. I did not have immoral relations with Kissinger. <laughs> that was um, a good Clinton. I do agree, Clinton. I did not have any immoral relations with Kissinger. I only got a little drunk. I, 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 did, I did not suck Obama's dick. I only nibbled it a little bit. It doesn't count. <laughs> I did not suck Obama's dick. I only nibbled it a little bit. It doesn't count. <laughs> I smoked, but I didn't inhale. And it was a train rape because it wasn't on a train. And it certainly wasn't train rape because it wasn't on a train. 
And my wife, Hillary, will tell you I'm the most God to honest, steady man there is out there. I'm Bill Clinton, and I'm running for a third term as president because I believe in the United States. Oh, look who finally joined. <laughs> There's Kristen! Holy shit! Yes. I learned how to use the internet, apparently. Wow. And how to download things. <laughs> awesome. Um, I just want to say that the picture for my Google Plus account is from, like, me in fifth grade. So I don't really look like that anymore. Yeah. I'm Nobody's saying you looked like that to begin with, okay? <laughs> well, well actually, actually, Henry Kissinger might be saying that. Henry Kissinger is a troll. Nobody likes him anyway. Wait, <laughs> I just talked about that about myself. I'm going oh my to God. stick myself in the foot right now. Hey, do the Clinton. That's that's pretty real sounding. You want to have immoral relations, Missy? <laughs> Why don't you put on a blue dress and say Monica? Mm. <laughs> How long have you been practicing that? Forever. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just good at it. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> to actually hear my Obama voice in its entirety because my voice is so deep over internet connection, you'd have to hear it in person. I can actually do it a lot better in person. Wow. Because you got you kind of got to get the tone, and the tone goes pretty could, well. Or you could record it into Audacity and then lower the pitch. I could. I like your hand motion for lowering the pitch. Well, the only time I'd want to raise the the pitch with Obama is this way. I agree. <laughs> I mean, I um. When I was visiting my family um, in Pennsylvania, they're pretty conservative. They hey, were having there, a conversation. Is there any way you can enable your video so that we don't have to see your fifth grade self and we can actually see your, like, your 2014 version without the time travel? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'm kind of sitting in a dark room, but I could eventually get on that. Oh, okay, I could well, eventually get on that because I'm scared and I want people to realize how pretty I am and I don't I don't wanna freaking expose myself for being a super awesome person and Oh I, yeah. I, I just wanna be I just wanna be a freaking troll and just hide behind <laughs> my own sorrow and misery, so I'm just gonna sit here and deny it and just because I don't wanna show off because that would be wrong to me, right? In this narrow minded paradigm that you put around yourself. <laughs> Why are you doing that, man? Where's your camera though? He just had it on. Yeah, I, I just had it on. I got nothing to hide. <laughs> you got to hide. What do I have to hide? I post selfies all the time on Facebook. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't really want, count. You do not actually want me to go into the conversation you had earlier and answer the question of what you think you have to hide. You don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, okay, okay, okay. Imagine this question hard. You maybe want to rescind that rhetorical question. Imagine me as Captain Picard sitting in his captain's chair, face palming. Just, just, oh imagine, my God. That. just imagine that. I don't want to imagine that. I'm, I'm kidding. Make, it, <laughs> make it so. Make Am it so. With a sewing Make machine. sure that Kristen shows a face on my way to the bridge. Anyway, you guys I, are pretty I, funny. So, so Jay just dropped off the face of the earth. Yeah, apparently. So, Kristen, everything that w that happened earlier before this conversation got like uber crazy silly, and then Jay dropped off the <clears throat> face of the known fucking universe for reasons unknown. <laughs> what do you think about all this? How how much did you even listen to of like the cosmic voice recording, and then you know everything after that that we went into like. How much of that did you catch? Um, I'm going to be honest, I didn't catch much of the actual cosmic voice recording. I I listened to <laughs> some of it, maybe five minutes of it, maybe a little more. 
Um, basically, I just think... I mean, I didn't listen to everything they said, so I'm just giving kind of a general overview of what I've been picking up on in the news, um, what I've, how I've seen other people react to it. I think you heard he said after it. What do you mean? In other words, I heard of what you said after. After the cosmic voice thing, when me and Rich and Jay were talking about it, uh, you said you were live on the bat. Yeah, I heard some of that. So, you can comment on that. <laughs> you did hear that. Um, I really do agree with what you guys said, and I think it's pretty cool how you guys are out here sharing your opinions, and but at the same time, you're promoting the idea that other people can have differing opinions or have the same opinions, and you're recognizing that they can discern it however they'd like. It doesn't have to agree with what you say, and that's something that, a lot of people have these ideas that, yeah, they may be good ideas, but the fact that they might shove them onto other people, force them on other people, it just, it totally negates what they're trying to say. Um, or they reject new information, too. Or, yeah. They're so emotionally invested in their current belief system. It shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't be to the point where you are unwilling to look at anything else, I think. Um, and Now say that into a mirror three times, put your heels together, and say there's no place to go. Wow, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're in the wonderful world of the Wizard of Oz, and Sorrow is going, I'll get you, my pretty, and your Toto, too. <laughs> Riding on the bike in the tornado, staring at you while you're sleeping. Yeah, how does that feel? Oh my god, that came out of Dave. What the fuck? <laughs> I've never heard that one. All right, uh, I'm gonna work towards getting the light on, so I'm gonna do that. Um, Cheers, aim the light, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Be quiet, Dave. Getting in line. A black lady in church. Getting in line with the force, Kristen is. <laughs> Realizing her true potential, she must. <clears throat> Ever, she's smarter than the average bear, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go Yogi. Mm. So, how are you guys doing tonight? Yogi. Mr. Ranger Smith is masturbating in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, boo boo, is, is he jizzing all over my chicken basket? Yes, Yogi. That son of a bitch. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> okay, um. I will give you guys a bit of a warning. My hair is kind of like. It looks somewhat like Satan right now. So that's that looks terrible. I'm in the world of depression. Where is me? I'm so ugly. Ah! <laughs> let it go. 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 Hey, I'm not depressed. Let the thoughts go. Just throw them out the window. You know, no one cares like, about the nasty like, thoughts. Just like a tongue depress depressor, depressed, which means pushed down. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is lighten up. If you want to be enlightened, just lighten up. Lighten up! Fly like a bird. <laughs> no. Quit saying you can't fly. God gave you wings. Now start flapping and jump out of the nest for Christ's sake. I know. You're Jesus. gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be good. You'll be okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be there to congratulate you. Most you'll ever be. You'll make the jump. You'll be good. You'll fly. You'll go with the birds. You'll soar with the eagles. You'll um, be fine. guys, I think I changed my mind. I don't want to use camera. <laughs> You might, you might want to change your picture to something 2014. <laughs> oh, there she is. 
You I troll. was kidding. Yeah, I did troll you. Look, look at that bright, vibrant smile. She's happy. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't talk about that. Blush. No, I'm going to talk about it. So it's to be you. <laughs> you came to the wrong place if you didn't want me to talk about it. I hold Kermit the Yeah, her smile. Yeah, she's smiling. She's grinning because we're you talking. Are yeah, it's all about you. <laughs> okay, but I do have a question for both of you. Um, what you determines... Know, you're brought to you by the letter bomb. <laughs> Number joint. Homicide has been brought to you by the letter H. I'm really fucking... <laughs> I haven't watched that show in so long. Have you guys ever heard of the show Between the Lions? Between the Lions? Yeah. Lions. Never... L-I-O-N-S. Rich, you're not that much older than me. How have you not heard of the show? Because I don't pay attention to modern shit. <laughs> or is it modern it's at like, all? No. Listen, well, between, between, between the Lions, L-I-O-N-S... Or L I N E S. What word do you say? Lions, like the animal. Oh. Um, but it's a play because it's like a play on words. Because the show is like about teaching kids to read. It's centered around lions that live in a library. Mm. So like read between the lions. It's kind oh, of annoying. I watched that show. Okay. Never mind. No. I don't remember. Now let's write. I don't remember. That. Now let's write the sentence mauled to death. Because this is read between. I remember that show as a kid. I remember watching it in first grade. I for, I've forgotten about that show. You remember it? Mm -hmm. I, I was really into that show. Um, yeah, public Television 101. Okay, so I was going to tell you guys a little bit about what I think is kind of happening um, <clears throat> collective consciousness wise regarding the elites and their bullshit I guess in my opinion that's what I think it is um, I'll mute out and give you the soapbox well it's, it's not going to be very much because I didn't really listen to very much it's just <coughs> okay um, basically I think people more people are waking up for one thing. You can see that everywhere. More people are looking at what they see on the news and they and and other you know, they'll take the political dichotomy left versus right and they're looking at it from a standpoint that they're not buying into the bullshit, basically. Um along with that, pe people who really do buy into it, it's getting stronger, it's getting more intense. They're really, really starting to latch on, and it's starting to get to the point where, as we can see, people are latching onto their beliefs so strongly where it's starting to become violent. I mean, it's always been like that, but it's really coming to a head. Like, people, I mean, even if you're thinking about it in places other than America, people are, you know, things are starting to happen. It's kind of coming to a head. Um, and I think that's just bound to happen as more people wake up. Bullshit has to come to the surface before people can realize that it's bullshit. Um, so I just, yeah, I think things are going to pick up the pace. But along with that, I'm seeing people all around me question what they're being told. And I think that's really cool. Um, along with me, yeah, I still have belief systems that I choose to latch onto. But I'm able to recognize that I'm doing that, which is very different from not being aware of it at all. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, and you guys were kind of talking about timing a little bit. I don't think you can pinpoint a time, and I don't think you need to. There's no point to. Um, basically, what you, what I can only do is observe what's going on and try to get as many views as possible and try to avoid um, anything that's going to be forced on me as dogma. I mean, maybe not avoid it, examine it, and shove it to the side. And that's um, pretty much all I've got, basically. I just think I'm really excited for the 
I think the day is going to come where they aren't um, in charge, the elites, and everyone really starts to realize what bullshit they've been pulling, and I'm I'm really excited for that. I hope I live to see that day. And I hope that we can instill a system of anarchy, but the real kind of anarchy that most people don't even know exists. You know, it's not just violence, every man for himself, it could work, I think. Um, and along with this, as humanity starts to face the bullshit that is going on in the world, people are going to start facing the bullshit. That, that's I, what I just want to add that if people want to know what the quote-unquote real anarchy is, they can go on to um, video channel, and um, there's a video of PSCC 2014, what is anarchy? Question mark, and that will show you what it is and what it isn't. Because I did my best to answer that question. There's some Lark and Rose stuff in there too. He's pretty badass, so using that was very appropriate. Yeah. So yeah, I just want I just wanted to interject with that so that anybody watching wasn't like, wait a minute, the real anarchy? What the fuck is that? Why don't you tell us where to get that information? What the hell, Chris? You know. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't mention that. Yeah, I just wanted to tell people where they can go ahead and get that, so there we go. Yeah, it's, uh, I watched most of it. It's a really great video, very, um, <coughs> it's really easy to understand. It has a bunch of cool, like, people phrasing the idea in different ways. It has, um, animations, um, I think it's awesome. And yeah, what I was saying is people, as the world faces the bullshit on the outside, you know, everything that's going on in all parts of the world, that can only happen when people start to realize the bullshit on the inside. That's all I'm saying. Um, people are going to... Me, at least, I talk all kinds of shit about everyone <laughs> in charge of things, you know. They're taking advantage of the populace, and it pisses me off a little bit, but, I mean, how many belief systems have they, pretty much have they indoctrinated me into that I realize that they're doing that and I'm like latching onto them, you know, it's like but I'm not really mad at myself for doing that I know it's a process I'm gonna get there eventually and right now it's just continuing to sort out the things I can't ignore it and I can't shove it to the side and I'm not gonna try to do that yeah, totally uh a little bit of a semi-related side note. Um, Rich was uh, talking about the the card face palm earlier. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking at you guys through like my big 42 inch screen TV. So like seeing you up there, Kristen. You know, I feel like Captain Picard, like on the bridge of the Enterprise, because like I have no headset on or anything. I'm looking at you guys through like a tiny corner. <laughs> Well, I got, like, no headset on. I just got, you know, the camera and microphone and everything. And, like, the 42-inch screen TV. Like, all I need here now is, like, you know, like a captain's chair and, like, Mr. Data over here and, you know, Commander Riker over here. Make it so, number one. Engage. Set course. Just, like, so <laughs> Star Trek over here. That's really funny. Yeah, but You've got it all set, though. Yeah, c continue. I, I just wanted to interject that, because as I was watching that, I was thinking of what he said earlier with the Picard references. And I'm like, you know, this totally does feel like Star Trek. I'm just chilling here. It's a big freaking U-screen conference call between the Klingons and the fucking Romulans here. You know, but, you know. <laughs> That's really funny. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Quit bragging. Quit bragging. Yeah, Dave. I want to have a freaking 42-inch. I got a freaking Asus PC. I don't care, okay, that you got your fancy little servers and all your stuff. You freaking bragged to me like 24-7 about that. Yeah, it's cool, but it's like... It, it's just pride and joy. <laughs> oh, I, I know, I know, but it's just... It's, <laughs> no, I'm I, kidding. I, 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 I just, I just no have fucking shit. It's shit. Fun. How long it took me to get this shit? God, that reminds me of a line from Switch when uh, somebody walked up to uh, 
Margo, and Margo had a fur coat on, and um, it was some activist against killing animals and stuff, and um, the activist is like, do you realize how many poor animals had to be killed in order to make that coat? And Margo looks at her and says, do you realize how many rich animals I had to fuck in order to get this coat? Yeah, yeah. As graphic as that sentence was. <laughs> it's a movie. It's called Switch. You'd like it. I'd like it. Yeah, I, I, this this guy who is like a real chauvinist pig dies and ends up getting uh, sent back as a woman. It's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would probably like that, judging from what you just said. Um. Did you just mute? Why'd you do that? <laughs> well, you can't really answer, but... <laughs> because we can, because we want to listen to your voice. Interruption, silly. <laughs> you can hear my voice and you don't have to mute we it. Want to, we, we want to hear your beautiful voice without interruption, so just continue speaking. And, all, and also, muting for potential feedback going from speaker to mic, speaker to mic, speaker to mic, and oscillating. So it's always just a good idea to mute when, you know, somebody else is about to go into a rant so that uh, your end isn't accidentally feeding back. It's just, you know, courtesy thing. You, yeah. you, would, have, you would have noticed me, Jay, and Rich doing the same thing earlier. Um, so, yeah, anyway. Well, I was listening, but I wasn't really... I kind of was, like, in another tab just listening. Um, but, yeah, pretty much... That's all I really have on the whole Cosmic Voice thing, considering I didn't listen to most of it. Uh, I can't, can't really try and talk about it. Um, but I would like to listen to more of it. I think I've always been really interested in this subject. I've always had a feeling that something a little fishy was going on as far as the government. It's always just seemed weird to me, the idea of other human beings being in charge of other human beings. Um, I don't think it's necessary. And I just think we are smarter than we think we are. We, if we really wanted to, we could take responsibility and own up and start living life how we'd want to. But, you know, that comes with a lot of facing yourself and that shit's scary so it's scary because it's different it's uncomfortable but that's I mean a lot of good things can come from being uncomfortable so yeah um someone else's turn <laughs> no <laughs> Okay, um, so is this going to be put on YouTube? It is? Okay. <laughs> this is strange. Um, well, it's... <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Rich. You're pretty funny. Um, nice to talk to you again, Dave. Missed ya. <laughs> okay, so... Oh! Okay, what I was going to say, now I remember... I was going to say this about my family. I visited them in Pennsylvania, and they're pretty conservative, Republican kind of thing. And so I was talking to them. They were tell they were pretty much having a conversation about how much Obama sucked. And they they're knowledgeable on that I'm more liberal than them, only because I just don't believe in the same thing as them. To them, that's liberal. Uh, and I said, you know, even Democrats are starting to hate Obama. Exhibit A, a lot of my other side of the family is Democratic, and they hate Obama, so. You're allowed to hate Obama if you're Democratic. And you're allowed to be anything other than Democratic or Republican, just in case you didn't know. There are other options. I promise you that. <laughs> just saying. Um, I don't even... I'm hesitant to call it libertarian because I feel like 
that's just going to be taken and stigmatized too. You know, whatever. It's just, why do you have to put labels on things? It's kind of unnecessary to me. Just have your own educated opinion on things. Why not? But apparently people don't like to do that. Even though it seems easier and a little less dramatic. Um, yeah, but I think it's good that people are... Oh, and of course, um, I think you can speak from experience as far as the fact that it's really, really easy to do the things that are easier and less traumatic, isn't it? And so hard to just do the things that are more difficult and more traumatic. You yeah. know I'm completely fucking sarcastic with my tone. I know you are. <laughs> but see, the thing is, people do... You know, I bet if you suggested the idea of not putting labels on things to some people, you know, it's just out of the scope because we've been told, you know, put everything in boxes. <laughs> That's really what the fuck we've been told. GMO should be GMO should be labeled, but you know exceptions to every rule. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I agree. In Oregon, hopefully, if the vote goes through, GMOs will in fact be labeled in my state. But that's relying on the system that's already broken, full of shit, full of holes, and full of politicians who can't seem to find their ass with their own hands. So. I mean, it passed in my county, you know, there was a ban on GMO crops, etc. It was 15119, that was the name of the farm bill. You can look it up, it's still on Google, I imagine. But, uh, yeah, it passed in Jackson County with the majority of the vote, and we are a GMO-free county. So. That's great. See, my thing is, really, I think we should just... I mean, it's one thing to get rid of GMOs, but at the same time, the people that care about GMOs are going to try their hardest not to eat them. So, I mean, banning them, is it necessary? Well, I'd like that, but it might be too out of the scope for, you know, to do everywhere. It In the town that I live in, it's a small town, a lot of farms, and they're really all for, you know, they don't care about the whole organic thing. They think there's nothing wrong with, you know, growing them the way you want. There's nothing wrong with the GMOs. It's just another way to feed people. And I think that that standpoint is a bit ignorant because it shows me that, you know, they may not have examined the other side. And not saying that you aren't allowed to have that opinion. You're allowed to feel whatever you want, but they definitely should be labeled. And I can't think of an argument against that. Because that is something that if you're a consumer and you're eating something, you should know what the hell it is. There's no, That doesn't stop you from making money off of it to label it. And the fact that they don't want to label it tells me there's something that they're trying to hide. There's, I mean, they know that if some people, if they know that there's GMOs in their food, they're not going to want to buy it. So... I'm just, I'm just not about the GMO thing. Um, but right now I live with my parents, so it's not really easy to, you know, buy my own food or make sure that it's not riddled with a bunch of weird shit. I have started buying my own drinking water, cut out that fluoride stuff. Um, well, hey, you know, right now, um, I know you have a job. Plus, the more you get into making YouTube videos, I'm going to be showing you how to make money on that, so on and so forth. So as your finances continue to go up, <clears throat> you know, you're going to be able to choose more and more the sort of stuff you want to eat as opposed to just dealing with whatever's handy to you. Mm -hmm. By the way, have I ever shown you this? I don't believe so. It's my keyboard and mouse that's this. what it is? Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. A mini keyboard that's and mouse. Yeah, it's, it's about the size of the cell phone. That's legit, dude. 
And it's for yeah, the that is I just I thought it was funny to have one the size of a of a TV remote, seeing as the screen is also my TV. So it's my computer, it's my TV, it's my um my Netflix, it's you know everything I got running up here, and you know like um you know there's like you know my TV remote right and. You know, this is for the, the Bose sound system and so on. So I'm thinking, wait a minute. Why have this wireless keyboard and mouse that's, like, huge and clunky? Why not, why not just make it a remote like everything else? Little bitty thing. Uh, how much was that? Like 15 bucks. Wow, okay. That's oh, and it, it, also, it also doubles as something to blind the shit out of you. Nice try, Dave. It didn't work. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got in reply right there. <laughs> See that? Yeah. That belongs you probably a lot more, I bet. It was enthralling. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part. I don't know. I mean, how many people do you really think are going to watch this video all the way through, guys? I think we should break the video up. I say keep the videos under an hour. I say just no be way. a rebel and just I, I just say I just say be a rebel and just keep going. Anybody you know who what? cares is gonna. Well, I'm talking it. about trying to get views. You know what I think? I think that there's that little fucking slide bar that when a computer works correctly and it doesn't have a Windows install that's not on its last legs and doesn't have an internet connection that's slower than dirt. People understand, oh, I don't like what's happening here. Let's take that little slide bar and move it forward and maybe see what's happening over here. There you even, go. I think even President Obama knows how to do that, and he's fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm not really worried about the length of these things. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, oh. Uh. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is so true. Oh, oh, and, 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 oh. When you, when and you have do, you noticed uh, how he uh, looks to the side like, he's re like he said something profa profound? He's like, he looks over and he's like... Like, and he like, he's like, wait a minute. You, you want to you wanna know but what... That, but that, that, that teleprompter... You, know, you want to know what he looks like? That, that teleprompter there, that says one thing. That teleprompter there... It's telling me another. Which teleprompter am I supposed to read from? <laughs> you know what he looks like? You know what he looks like? That teleprompter, because it's talking mm -hmm. about really, really cool drone strikes. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of a black version of Mussolini from World War II, who would just sit there and just, you know, he would like... If you ever watch Mussolini in some of those old reels with his speeches, he's always doing this thing, and he's always doing that, really impressed with himself, you know, yeah, doing doing this thing, you know. I know what you're talking about, too. Um, yeah, he's like, doing that, doing that hand gesture thing that he always does, and he's like. <laughs> oh, my God. The old deuce, you know. Guys, we could be shot for putting this video online. I don't care. They would have shot me already. Oh my god. Don't you I know Russians died. can't Russians can't shoot? I'll never forget someone told me uh George Bush was the president at this time. Um I was in like second grade or something and a kid told me that I needed to respect the president and <laughs> even in second grade I knew that was bullshit. I remember saying that's retarded or something like that. I'm not going to do that. And we kind of got to it. <laughs> oh, uh, let, us, let us take a moment. Let us take a moment. Okay, let us take a moment. 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 Check it out. Giddy up, boys. I need to fly my F-102 over the rock. Hey, let, us, let us take a moment. Let us take a moment. To show proper respect to the president. Okay, here we go. There's proper respect. 
I, I, I did it. I was, I was right on cue with you. I was right on cue. There we are. You, you know, don't have to tell me to do the that. The whole government of the United States. <laughs> I think they deserve a big. <laughs> That's what they deserve, Rich. Yeah, pigs. Oh, here's my tax money. I'm just going to pour it out of the trough for you so you can come gorge yourself like a fat obese woman. Seven diabetes. Dave is showing them his talent. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, so how do you guys even know each other? Through DeviantArt. Random coincidence. Oh, yeah, you told me about that. Didn't Katarina used to live in Oregon? Yes, that's where she's from. Cool. Port Portland area. I actually visited Portland when I was like four. I actually remember a lot from that trip. It was pretty cool. Portland's I remember, I remember my people. fourth birthday. I remember my fourth birthday. What do you remember from it? I woke up. I got out of bed. Obviously, I... I was a hell of a lot shorter than I am now. I was walking down the hallway, past the bathroom, on the way to the kitchen, and in the apartment I was living in, the dining room came off but adjoined to the kitchen. Whereas um, in most houses and in, in apartments, the dining room usually comes off of the living room. But in this setup, the dining room came off the kitchen. And they had one of those little child gates blocking off the dining room because that was the room where they were getting everything ready for the party and everything. <clears throat> and I start to walk in there, and, you know, there's mom, dad, whoever else is there, and, like, you know, that typical, like, you know, how you talk to a little kid on the birthday, like, wow, oh, you're four already, oh, whoa, what? you know, and... I'm just looking at, him, looking at him like, yeah, okay, I'm fine. Where is the cake, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, um, the cake. That's so true. When, when you're four, it's like, screw the cake. Where's the freaking presents? Oh, my God, yeah. toys already. No, no, I, had, I, toys. Had, look, I had just woken up. First thing that's on your mind when you're waking up is food. And when you're, when you're at that age, it's like, you're not discerning between, like, the healthy meal and the dessert. You're like, I don't know what healthy meal is. Fuck that. Give me the cake. Give me the ice cream. Give me the chocolate. Give me the, you know, give me that. It tastes fucking great. No, I, I see, it's always been weird for me. Even when I was little, I wanted to do, to do like, a real breakfast, like, you know, butter, buttermilk pancakes with, like, a crap load of syrup, butter, bacon, Eggs, sausage, I mean, the whole works. That's what I want in the morning. And a big frickin' glass of Ovaltine or Nest Quick. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Crap. I've always been like that, too. I've, But I will admit, if there's cake there, it's just going on the platter, too. Like, all of it at once. I don't care. I never cared. I, I, I can't <laughs> do it. My stomach, my stomach's just like, fuck no, I can't, do sh I can't do sugar like that this time of morning. It just doesn't happen. Oh, really? By the time it's, but noon or afterwards, look out. <laughs> look out. Reality's a pancake, not a light switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? He just, took, he just took the cake thing and uh, uh, clever, Dave, clever. It still worked, too. You deserve a brownie butt. <laughs> I, I actually rather have a brownie, like particularly the marijuana kind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, when we hang out, let's get on that. Uh, when we hang out, we're going to be on that. He said yeah, marijuana. In a couple of years, Why when team? you and your aunt, because uh, she's got her boyfriend in Chicago. Yeah, her boyfriend's family. And she really loves Chicago, visiting it, so she really wants to go back. She suggested it, and I was like, hey, can I tag along? And can we make this approximately when I'm an adult? So it'll be way more enjoyable. Yep, you'll be 18. No, I'm fucking jealous. 
guys are talking about shit, and I'm just sitting here, and I'm just like feeling unincluded, like kid hey, in the corner, you know, and you're like, you no, know, I'm gonna have fun, and you're not invited. <laughs> Look, man, you got two, you got two fucking years to get your get your own popular YouTube channel together to have enough money coming in to come, to come hang out with us in fucking Chicago, okay? I don't have a YouTube channel. Hopefully by then I will start our making films. Huh? I'm posting YouTube videos. I'm done. That's a big system. I just don't. I don't post for me. Don't be now rich. You know, get, don't be like Kristen. Get over this. I'm too miserable and not worthy to do you. I never said I was miserable, was I? Enough, you know. Are you miserable? No. I'm actually quite content. I just don't feel a need to go around with a camera everywhere filming everything I see. But you don't have to do that. I'm going to post a video of rainbows and fall leaves. We'll see how many Yeah, because of course that's totally exactly what I do. It's not like I make documentaries or anything. I'm just really? like, that's true. Oh my Let's god, it's a fucking rainbow. Let me get six hours of this fucking thing. Yeah, that's totally what I do. It's not like I'm here making documentaries. <laughs> yeah, Dave's all about the unnecessary shit. Yeah. He does every day. Kristen, when I visit Ohio, I want to take like eight hours of footage of your fucking wall doing nothing. Maybe if like I'm real lucky, a fly will like fucking lay on there. That'll be totally cool. Oh my god, we'll probably get a ton of hits from that. Oh yeah. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you film me ramming my head through her wall I and then my head is like stuck her. halfway through so that way my skull is sticking out with like plaster and drywall over my head. We'll see how many views that gets. Okay, oh, I, I say it'll get this. a lot. Man, totally let's, let's video Satan pounding Obama's ass with a fucking pitchfork. Yeah, man. Or getting a pineapple with the butt next to Hitler. That would yeah, be even better. Go, like a little Nicky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever see that movie, Kristen, Little Nicky? I don't think so, no. Oh, fucking thing hilarious. I have not seen all my friends, um, a lot of my friends, I should say, are quite a bit older, so they've seen movies from, like, a completely different time period, and a lot of them I haven't seen. So most of the movie, um... Oh, you'll love that movie. Like, you know, Hitler gets a pine cone shoved up his... Or not pine cone, pineapple shoved up his ass once a day. <laughs> once a day? When they open up the pineapple vault. There's Satan there opening up the pineapple vault. Making Hitler pick one, and Hitler mm -hmm. pulls out this little bitty one. Satan's like, <laughs> and then Hitler pull, pulls out this one's a little bigger. Satan's like, no, it's always. And then Hitler biggest. pulls out this big pineapple, and it's mm -hmm. like, it's and always the biggest and one. Hitler's dressed in like this pink dress and shit and everything. He's he's dressed in drag, and then they just bend Hitler over. And Satan just takes his pineapple and <laughs> right up his ass. Oh my gosh, that is really really funny. Is there? Is that just one scene in the movie? I'm assuming. Oh, it's that's only one scene. The whole damn movie's hilarious. Like there was this one peeping Tom that ended up going to hell and coming through. Right? He's like, oh my god, where am I? And he's like, oh, you're in hell. Hell, what did I do to deserve to be in here? I was just a horny little birdie. That's all, just a horny little birdie. No, you weren't a horny little birdie. That's not what a horny bir little birdie looks like. This is what a horny birdie looks like. There's this like big rock, rock that starts getting up behind him and screwing him in the ass and chasing him. Around. I was like, I don't deserve that. That would be, if hell was real, that would be what it was like. It's hilarious. That's beautiful. If you did not see me back off from that description, I, I don't know. That, that was just like, I just, I just like, that would, that would be funny, you know? Something like that going on. You just walk into a room randomly and you see that. I don't even know what my reaction would be. I'd probably just be sitting there going, what the fuck? I know. What am I seeing? 
I'd just back off like that. I'd be like, whoa. <laughs> you just continue what you're doing. I, I ain't going to be part of that. I think Goodbye. I'd be so stunned I'd just watch in awe. I mean... Now I'm going to stare... Now I'm just going to stare at you like... What? You'd watch at, it. At me? That was weird. <laughs> so how's everyone's night going? I'm done. I'm done. I'll be back. I'm just joking. Right. But I'm just done proverbial. Proverbial. I can't even say anything. <laughs> He's gonna let like, we'll go. Him. Whatever. He's probably taking a piss or something. So this wasn't as horrible as you thought. No, but I find it ironic how Jay had to get off. I actually... We've not, been not, in that, not, not in that context, though. I mean, you know... Oh, I know. You know Who knows why he got he off? like, getting off, you know. Right. Nothing like that. You know what I mean. Got off of the Google Hangout. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm just teasing you. I know. And I mean, this is going on YouTube, so it's probably a good thing that we clarified. Yeah. Well, this, well I mean, this streams right into YouTube. Like, how do you think you were watching this using a YouTube link? <sighs> no way. Yeah, wait. How many people do you think are watching it, though? I don't know. Think about it this way. When you were watching us, we were streaming live. Right? Yes. So why would you think that's not the case now? <laughs> well, I didn't know it was a YouTube link. Huh? I didn't know it was a YouTube link. Yeah. And then after this is over, you know, it's going to process as a regular YouTube video and it's going to show up. Sweet! Right now it's only a streaming video. It's not like saved in as a uh, you know an archive yet, but as soon as the video is over, it's gonna process equivalent to as if I had you know uploaded an actual you know YouTube video. It saves in automatically. Okay, th that's cool. Um, I have a question for you, Dave. What? How? So, do you think that they? Are there is a chance of them giving you back your YouTube channel. 50-50, it all kind of depends. Because yeah. I mean, they just, like, yanked it for no freaking reason. So mm -hmm. it, it depends on whether or not they want to respond back to me at all. See, if they don't respond back to me at all, then they're probably not going to give it back. Now, if they do respond back to me, then they're either going to be like, oh, sorry, you know, there was a glitch, here's your channel back, whatever. Or they're going to be like, sorry, you violated this miscellaneous, like, you know, thing we're not even really going to go into. But, yeah, you just violated something. So, like, fuck off and go away. We're not going to tell you. And here's the crux. Only 48 hours before Obama declares the quote-unquote unconstitutional, let me repeat myself, unconstitutional, uh airstrikes on Syria, which, as you recall, six months ago, everybody and their mother was against, but now oh, all of a sudden, ISIS, those bastards, we have to kill them now! They're gonna behead us! They're gonna... Ah! People's heads explode, kind of like they you know, see the Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones. They're like, ah! You know, it's like, calm down. ISIS is not gonna come behead you. Those people can't even, you know put their dick in straight when they're trying to fuck a goat, you know, yet alone have, <laughs> yet alone have the hand-eye coordination to be able to chop your head off. But uh, anyway, it was yeah. really interesting. Two days before the Syria airstrikes movement, his channel gets canned. Okay? And it was because we did a video on the issues pertaining to ISIS and, and ISIL. And because I had two particular... Um, words in the title. One word was ISIS, and the other word is false flag. You put ISIS and false flag together, 
during a four-day window that I didn't know was existing at the time, we only knew in hindsight, during a four-day window when Congress decides to go take a nap because they didn't want to deal with Obama's hissy fit, whereas he was about to go pull a Syria bullshit, I didn't know I was in that within that four-day hissy fit window. So you put that together, Google runs their little fucking bots through, Oh, look, there's certain keywords and stuff while Obama's having a fi hissy fit. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know how many other channels got spanked during that time, but I know there's a lot of specific videos from other people's channels that were being taken down because I did a little research into it, and people were bitching about it. Like, hey, I put up this, and all of a sudden, you know, that video's gone, that video's gone, that video's gone, that video's age-restricted, that video's gone, da da da, da. It's like, what? There was videos of the quote-unquote fake beheading. Someone was talking about it being fake and showing that, and you can tell it's fake. Yet, there are videos on YouTube that are, like, years and years old of real, actual beheadings. You can, like, tell the difference between the real ones and the fake. The real beheadings, they're, they're up there. You know, they've been up there for years. You know, YouTube isn't taking them down. But any of the fake beheadings in regards to ISIS, it's like, no, uh, taken down for too graphic of content and violence and blah, blah, blah. But these actual real beheadings uploaded by Ahmed in, you know, Fuckustan over there, or whatever, you know, like 10 years ago or whatever. Those are still up there, no problem, with the little fake ones and someone saying, hey, look at this, here's why it's fake. That's like, ew, take it down. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of levels of censorship and bullshit going on, and that's not conspiracy theory or whatever. I mean, that's provable. You know, they upload these particular types of videos, and then they get shit canned. I mean, people are, you know screen capturing it and showing step by step, okay, here was the video, then this happened, here's what, you know, freaking YouTube says on this link now, and, you know, when people are talking and, and getting together, and like, oh, yeah, that happened to me, did that happen to you? Yeah, that happened to me, too. So I'm just yet another person chiming in, only instead of having this one video taken down, I have my entire fucking channel taken down as a result of, of two fucking words wrongly timed in a title of one video, the little censorship bot thought that was important enough to bring down my whole goddamn channel. I don't think it was a human person that went through all that, it was like, oh, that Dave motherfucker, ooh, that's a no-no, we're gonna... No, I think it was an automated robot that was on a little search and destroy based on titles, descriptions, tags, and things like that. I don't oh, think it's a full book. Yeah. And where's Chris? She dropped off. That saddens me. I was just getting so accustomed to her face. It was so She'll refreshing to look at. She'll probably pop back in. She probably just temporarily nailed. See, I mentioned ISIS, and Kristen's gone. Ah. It, it's like, it's like, it's like the vanishing mime act. It's just like, <gasps> yeah. you know, just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> and if you say the secret word ISIS, we won't scream real loud. We'll censor your video. <laughs> <laughs> She's on Facebook. Let's see. I just typed, are you coming back? Question mark. That's like almost 2.30 in the morning already. Time just zips by. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means this hangout's been going for three hours, give or take a half hour. Something like that. She is responding. Still typing.
Sue and sorry, I opened another tab and IE went berserk. I think she'll be back on. I just typed in Internet Exploder. Mm hmm. Yeah, she needs to update to Chrome. Oh, wait, that'll take five and a half years, and we can do that entertaining uh, round of. Uh, Chrome, I, Chrome and IE are two different browsers. No, no, they're the same exact thing. That's totally what I just said. I'm not. Dude, I know my shit about computers too. Yeah, there's Firefox, there's Chrome, and then there's Internet Explo Exploder E Glue. Uh, don't forget, <laughs> don't forget Opera. Oh, and then there's Opera, yeah, and Safari. Safari's for Mac though, isn't it? I don't think it's for. You can get it for PC, and you could do it for Linux, because Linux, as you know, so well can do just anything. I know they got it for Linux. They've got a I, I never personally have screwed with it, but um They have it for Windows. And then of course there's uh um, Netscape is still around, but it hasn't been worked on or developed or anything. It's just kinda like left as is. What is? Netscape. Oh yeah. And then of course there's Blue Moon. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No. Netscape, yeah. Netscape used to be the shit back in the day. I mean, that was like, that was the Firefox of the '90s, if you want to make a comparison, you know. Mm. Like everybody used Netscape because IE has always been a total piece of shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. From the beginning, Internet Exploder has always been dog shit. <laughs> yeah. So back in the day, it was IE versus Netscape, whereas like now it's like IE versus Firefox, and then here comes Chrome. Yeah, I, I said Internet Exploder, LOL, and she said fucking right. Nate, Netscape is next to AOL now. I guess AOL bought out Netscape, not surprising. <coughs> as far as I know, Netscape no longer exists. <laughs> oh, we are living in the world of synchronicities, my friend. The first article that appears, Coalition Striking ISIS. Do what? Okay, here, here. Oh, Coalition Striking ISIS targets in uh, Syria. Here we go. Um, where is that quote that I saw about psychopathic terrorists? And what have we been talking about this whole entire chat? Psychopathic terrorists, and gee, it's not of the Islamic brand, but more of the globalist <laughs> establishment brand. And these bastards are talking about the. They're talking about the more um, Islamic brand, but yet at the same time, if you're awake, you know they're also talking about it right in your face, the behind-the-scenes psychopathic terrorists. Okay, this is about psycho. But I was I was telling Dad the other day, you want to stop stop ISIS? That's real easy. Just have Obama commit suicide. He could jump off the the edge of the Grand Canyon, or if he really wanted to be artistic about it, he could um, skydive out of Air Force One without a parachute. But that's the quickest way to stop ISIS. That is have Obama commit suicide. Obama's up there like, um, we need to stop ISIS. Well, you are ISIS. Slit your throat. That'll stop ISIS. Not sad. <laughs> no, yeah. the entire the entire U.S. government in its current state is ISIS. It, I know. All... I mean, I was just joking around with my dad. Obviously, doing anything to any of these politicians will not help anything. That's why I would not recommend anybody ever committing any violence against them, because it's like. It's like eliminating the cough and ignoring the cold. Because it really requires an awakening of human consciousness to realize that, hey, we've been giving these scumbags permission to lord over us. So for as long as we're still doing that, you remove one, he just gets replaced by another. Like freaking cockroaches, man. You kill one, they breed a hundred more. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's human consciousness that has to change. We gotta be willing to take responsibility and not expect fucking babysitters to lord it over. 
government's just a diaper. We got to grow out of diapers, but that's up to the collective population. That's why t today's revolutionaries are always tomorrow's tyranny, and why Mark Twain said history never repeats, but it does broad. You know, if killing politicians actually worked to solve anything, it would have worked hundreds of years ago, and we wouldn't be in this mess now. It doesn't work. Because it used to say ISIS, false flags, prejudice, and Hitler. Now, now the image graphic still has the, the correct title because that's an image and the bots can't scan that. But the text title says um, ICE PISS, I C E P I S S, false fags, F A G S, prejudice, and Hitler. I changed it so the little fuck you bots don't come and nail me again. But the image graphic has the proper title. Because the bots don't know how to scan that. Yay! Isa Mario, she's back! Hello! Oh. Hello! What did I miss? Hi. Everything. Um, we're just joking about, <laughs> about, about Obama. Obama's the butt of like every joke in the country at the moment. Because he is the biggest joke in the country at the moment. Yeah. I agree with that statement. It's... <laughs> and I did see something, though. The thing is, when you start to look at it from like the whole globalist elite idea perspective, you realize that Obama's not really a bad guy. He's just really, really stupid. Really He's brave. A yeah, hey, I got a question. Um, I stole a Romulan cloaking device. You can't see me, right? No. Okay, cool. Then it's working. I've got it engaged. Yeah, because I, like, stole a Romulan cloaking device. So, Holy yeah. shit, Dave. I don't know what that is. Oh, I guess it's a you Star know. Trek. Hold it, hold it. I'll tell her. I'll tell her. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's a Star Trek reference. It's basically like a uh, tractor shield. It basically converts your traditional patterns of material existence. It basically makes you blend into the background, turns you invisible. You don't. It bends light it. around you. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. Even though he's totally the way, shit. We have that technology now, by the way. It's not in the form of like an energetic force field, it's but they've skin. actually created a fucking material that can do it. And I'm not it's even talking skin. about cameras. I'm talking about a material that'll actually bend it's light. Called snake. It's called it's called snake. It's called snake skin. Really? Snake yeah. skin camera. Get snake skin camouflage, yeah. I can pull it up and I will reference my friend Begira3005 on DeviantArt.com. Lucky yeah. engineer. That should have, that all about this. But it's a, it's a material that bends light around you. So, like, yeah. you know, like, I don't think they have, like, the face paint version. You can't, like, paint your face up with it or anything. So according, it's like, according. Body according head. to my friend, uh, according to my friend Mike Brown, they do have. And this isn't up for confirmation because there's no way you could technically prove it okay. at this point. But they do have exosuits that do just that. You remember seeing GI Joe, right? The new GI Joe. Yeah. The suit, the suits that you know you press the button and you blend into the background, reflect refracts light around you. Yeah. They have them, according to him, and basically that's what snake skin is. That doesn't surprise. Like, 
It's essentially a predecessor to a Romulan cloaking device. That's sweet. Basically, basically turns your patterns and basically blends them into ambient light waves, so that way you blend into the background. You become a background image instead of a frontal image. I can think of so many situations where that would be absolutely convenient. I mean, it's it's making you invisible. Sneaking into concerts, you know. <laughs> what did you just say, Dave? Sneaking into concerts, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah, you could do anything you wanted. Oh, that'd be so cool. I mean, not... There's probably some restrictions, but you could do a lot. Uh, I know what she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> what am I thinking? No, I, I don't know. Tacos. <laughs> You know, I wish I had some, like, heavyweight fishing line on a pole or something, so I could be like, no, look, Kristen, seriously, see, I'm holding my can of pop, and we make an <laughs> arm isn't here, it's just, like, the fishing line going up, and all you see is, like, the pop hovering. See, man, I'm, I'm not fishing you. <laughs> I can pretend, like, like that's happening. <laughs> Dave, that's like, Dave, that's, like, totally UFO crap. You know how many of those fake videos you see of the flying saucers that those guys have on the fishing poles and they're bouncing all over the camera <laughs> and stuff. And then they have the special light effects in there. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I'm getting pretty tired. That's okay. You know what's funny, though? How people automatically equate UFOs with aliens. It's like, wait a minute. UFO doesn't stand for Uranus fornicating object that stands for unidentified un flying object. object. That means it could be extraterrestrial, it could be terrestrial, it could be anything. It's unidentified. Hence mm. the U UFO. Military. A lot of the stuff that I think a lot of people see that they claim is alien in origin, and like, no, it's U.S. military. Yeah. What, do you, what, do you, yeah. what do you think they're spending? What do you think they're spending a hundred billion dollars on? A gold toilet seat and a iron dildo for President Obama to fist himself with when he's having a bad day. Not to mention, also to think that we are the first civilization or species to evolve on this four billion year old planet. To think that we're the only one to ever be here would be stupid. So. What if not only were the new kids on the block for the galaxy, but also the planet? If there was, you know, another civilization that uh, still has a presence here, and they originated from here, then they, too, are not extraterrestrial. They are very terrestrial. In fact, they were here first. So, just the whole idea of, like, anything you don't understand absolutely having to be from out there. No. Even if it's something that's not technically made by humans, there could be another civilization, another species that predates ours that still has a presence here. And if they originate here, then they are no more E.T. than we are. Wait, how come we wouldn't... But if they were still here, wouldn't we be able to know that they're here? Uh, our, our governments probably would, but us, no. Good point. By the way, by the way, there is a link up in the corner to the adaptive camouflage that I'm referring to, and BAE Systems did unveil it for combat vehicles. Dave, what's your opinion on eating meat? Um, as long as it's raised properly and not fucked with, then it's fine. As long as you're not. Mm -hmm. Brutalizing the chickens and brutalizing the cows and cramming them into unsanitary pens and all this and that. Have you seen the videos on how they treat them fucking animals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as long as they are raised respectfully and in accordance to nature, you know, free range the things. And when you kill them, make it quick. Don't make them freaking yeah. suck. You know, there, there's no reason to, like, let these animals live a totally brutal, terrible life and then only to die, like, excruciatingly horribly. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, when they live like that and they die like that, their bodies are constantly being saturated with stress hormones and adrenaline. And then we eat that. Very, very true point. I was thinking of going vegan for health benefits, basically. Um, what I was going to do is, it's called raw till four. You eat a raw vegan diet until four o'clock, and then after that you can eat, like, pretty much anything you want as long as it's vegan, which I think is pretty cool. You know, I mean, what, I, you know what I personally would suggest? Learn to communicate with your body better. Pay attention to what your body's craving and go with that. Not my what, body's craving not, the junk. Uh, no, that's your ego craving that. I was about to say, mm. not what your ego's craving, your body. There's a, you got to learn to discern the difference. There is a difference. Well, how do I know what my body's craving? You feel it. I observe it. Well, it takes instead of trying to calculate it. It takes practice, and it takes it takes a willingness to pay attention to your body, because it like I guess the best way to say it is, it tells you in the form of intuitive knowing. It's mm. not like you hear a voice like. Hey, motherfucker, get me some green beans, bitch. <laughs> Like, for example, like, um, how do you know the difference between when you're cold and when you're warm? You know, it's kind of like that. You know, so, and, and then what if, and, and, and what if, um, society taught you that when you're, when you're warm, you're in alignment with Jesus, and when you're cold... That's Satan playing tricks on you. You know, you'd be completely screwed up as far as your sense of what's what, and you'd be completely confused. Well, that's how we get with all these belief systems we have about what we should and shouldn't eat and what's popular to eat and whatever. And then we got all these self-defeating fucking belief systems that don't help either. Our brains are complete chaos we're lucky we understand what we know what we're uh, that you know what we're thinking and feeling much less what our body is trying to tell us it fucking needs so it's definitely something that you got to kind of train yourself into to kind of let go of all the the programming about food and to really pay attention to what your body's wanting and not what your ego is telling you based on what society has programmed it not not because you saw a commercial for, you know, the fucking McDonald's burger and your ego's going, Burger! You know what I mean? That's not your body. Hey, I need something. It's really funny because what you said was kind of true. It's like something goes off in you. It's like, I want that fucking hamburger. And for it's me, it's Rally's hamburgers. Jesus Christ. And the fries? Oh, man. And Don't you let know me in. When you, listen, when, when you really li start listening to your body, you'll also start to, uh, to discern the difference between a real hamburger and that oh. pathetic, substituted, God only knows what the fuck is in it burger. I w okay, okay. Okay, here is the story here. I went off McDonald's for... Man, I haven't eaten a McDonald's hamburger since I was 13. And that was when I joined the Young Marines and I went on the health program that they have. I noticed a change overnight. I stopped drinking soda, you know, and we're talking that high fructose corn syrup filled garbage that they pass as soda in this country. I stopped eating oh, yeah. the French fries. I stopped eating the, all of it. Hey, if you uh, want to drink soda, drink Dr. Pepper. At least that's technically still pop. There you go. You drink a lot of Dr. Pepper. Yeah. If if you're going with the high fructose stuff, but if you want other sodas, go with real sugar. Anyway, I like cut off all of that stuff. When I when I went to sleep at night, like I ate so much junk at one point in my life when I was a kid, you you'd feel like this weight on your chest. It felt like somebody was sitting on your chest, and you were having trouble breathing unless you laid on your stomach. And when I got on a normal diet and I started feeding my body what it needed, what it was craving. I felt that weight just lift off of my chest, and I have never felt it since because awesome. I can discern. 
you know, I know what real food is as compared to what, you know, the fake garbage pink sludge that they pass for real meat. You know. But, you want you want to know something else you could do to kind of get your your biological guidance system back on track? Um don't eat anything at all for a day or two and drink as little water as possible. Drink some, but drink as little water as possible. I'll tell you why. When you don't eat any food and you drink as little fluids as possible, that tells your cells to go into a detox mode. See, that's why when you're quote-unquote dehydrated, your pee is dark. Because that darkness is the toxins being released out of the cells. So that's actually a healthy thing. They tell you, oh, it's bad, don't do that. But it's actually a healthy thing. It's not healthy to do it for more than two days. Don't do it for more than two days. And if you, don't, can, if you, don't, if you can only tolerate doing it for one, then cool. But don't do it for more than two and even though some people might suggest don't drink at all for two days, I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest drink very little. Very mm -hmm. little. And, you know, water or juice or something that's healthy, not garbage. Um, drink very little and don't eat at all for a day or two. And, yeah, you're going you're gonna to feel, probably feel like shit for those two days because you're detoxing. You're dumping out garbage that your cells have been storing up and your pee is going to be dark and you're going to get all that out of you then after that start eating and drinking normally but don't like go back to like all the junk you know like do your vegan thing and drink water and what you'll start to see with that is your body's own guidance system start to kick back in again and you'll start to know the difference between real food and bullshit because then after that, you know, after those couple of days, and then say, you know, for the rest of the week, you know, do your vegan thing, but continue drinking, like, water, juice, and whatever. After a week or two of doing the more healthy thing, then try eating a McDonald's hamburger. What you're going to find is your reaction will be like, oh, my God, I can't even finish this. This is disgusting. Get <laughs> away from yeah. You're gonna want oh, to I, throw I, that. I would, my mother was craving a full fish like a couple. Well, actually, it was back in December. And, you know, I had this McDonald's gift card that somebody had given me for Christmas in my stocking stuffer. Oh, joy. I don't eat McDonald's except for breakfast because the breakfast. Merry Christmas. <laughs> their, bre their breakfasts actually are good. I, I still haven't had a problem with their breakfast. It's their lunch that is disgusting. And she got two filet of fishes. She ate the first one, and then she didn't want the second one. She said I could have the second one. I tried it, and I was like, this isn't fish. I know what real fish tastes like. I go to the Oregon coast. We get fresh, local, real fish, you know, real clam chowder, real cod, you know, all of the real stuff. I tried that. That tasted like factory-made garbage. It was hey, we got, we got Lake, Lake Michigan right here and rivers and streams and everything else. I know what real fish tastes like as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've yeah, tried you've real had fish. real fish. Right. You know real fish. Oh, That's yeah. Good. The fake shit, I just toss it out in a chum bucket. It's like, you know, leave that for bait for one of the globalists want to come and have a meal at my house, you know. I'll give them that can. That, I'll give them that uh, that canned crab or whatever that's in the uh, bumblebee canned crab, that stuff will give you dysentery. That stuff is so toxic. Ugh. Just give them a crabby patty. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, I don't want to eat any fish that's in the can. I mean, I'll take tuna occasionally, but well, I'm wary of it. Fuck. That's hard to fuck up. You can't fuck up tuna. That's hard yeah. to do. You got you got to really try to mess up tuna. I've only got really sick to my, I, I've only got sick to my stomach once from a can of tuna. That was once, and I think it was because it was past ex its expiration and I didn't read it closely. But other than that, yeah, do it. never, never. Anyway, I've tried some kick-ass tuna salad. That's all I'm uh, saying. 
Is an all kinds of salad kick ass? Isn't all kinds of salad kick ass? Is that what you said? No, isn't all kinds of tuna salad kick ass? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like I like egg salad. I, I was just reminded. You know all the different uh, health products and stuff I eat here, and you asked me for links a while back. Yes. But, oh my gosh. But, but at the time you didn't have money. Now you have you have money. You work. I should give you the links again. I just got a fat daddy paycheck, not to brag, but I could I'm putting some money to the side. Also, you know that video that I showed you? Not the brag yo swag. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I showed you it was about the how we need certain kinds of sugar to rebuild um connections yeah, between yeah, cells. Yeah, yeah. Like the six types of sugar, the two main ones create yep. the other four, but seeing as our bodies get so fucked up that the Sometimes the two main ones can't create the other four. You need to bring in the other four from other sources and all that. I was thinking about uh, one of my friends that I know online, Doug. He suggested it to me, and he said it he it really helps him stay in shape. It builds up his immune system like crazy, he said, and all he does is take these pills that have the sugars. But what, it, are the, what are the pills called? Um... They're sold from a company called Manatech. I don't recall the actual name. Uh, he was going to send me more links about it. Yeah, give me the information on where to get it, and I'll check it out. Okay, yeah, thank you, by the way. They're $60 for, I think he said a month, so pretty uh -huh. expensive. Yeah, they make you pay for the health supplements. I've oh, been yeah, they do. Myself. I've been making... Unless, I've been unless you to find them cheaper. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. I, 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 I tend to find the deals. <laughs> Not to brag. I've been, I've been Dave, come on. Let me say my piece here. Come <laughs> on. Well, I just don't like to you know, be like, you he's bragging again. Because he stated a fact. He's bragging. I'm going to cry now. I'm going to pretend I'm Obama and go get a golf club and hide from Congress. This is the four, This is the 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. Let me ask you a simple question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? <laughs> um, anyway. Is that from Pulp Fiction? I got my lucky golf club. No. Yeah, that was Clint Eastwood. That was Eastwood. But anyway, um, what I was going to say... Was Clint Eastwood in Pulp Fiction? If not, I'm going to feel really bad about myself. Don't feel bad about yourself. That was a everything joke. Is, oh, enough of that. No more. I'm just gonna. Uh, you you say you say you feel bad about yourself one more time. I'm gonna throw my fuck. I'm I'm gonna get an airline ticket. I'm gonna come over there and I'm gonna. Throw <laughs> uh, that's you like the out. first time I've said that, and it was. I think it was, that was um, sarcastic. I have, I have heard it enough from Dave to freaking fill a coffin full of sorrow and misery from the pharaohs onward to freaking. I don't know. But. And by that he doesn't. Wow, Dave, mean, talking shit. He doesn't mean I've, I've said it about myself. He means that I've been like, man, you know, uh, uh, Kristen's down on herself again. It'd be really cool, you know, if she could just talk with us and, and you I know. I broke up with her. I broke uh, up with her. But she's down on herself again and again. I broke, up, I broke up with a girl like that. And let me tell you, you're not alone out there. There are plenty of females just like you who are beating themselves up to no avail for whatever reason. And it's completely illogical. There's but no logic there's reasons. I but, mean, there's reasons behind it. It's not just like. Yeah, he's not saying he's not saying there isn't. What he's actually trying to say, also, but he didn't let him get to that part, is that right. un unlike his ex, you are willing to shift out of your old belief system uh -huh. into new ones. And where, the light bulb comes on. Whereas go. his ex no matter what he said or did, was completely unwilling to shift out of the self-pity thing. Like, you know how occasionally um, when you're feeling really down on yourself, you'll temporarily push people away? Well, imagine that, but not temporary, and just like exponential pushing until, like, she's just pushing just everybody away, just period, just done. And there's a lot, a lot of girls that get like that. 
and mm-hmm. you're not you're not one of them. You're one of yeah. those people that's willing to face yourself and you know come to terms with this, and you've decided that you want something better for yourself. In terms, in, in better terms. Yeah, I'm going to look into the camera when I say this, like if I were looking into your eyes. In better terms, you are a gem in this world of complete stupidity and fuck. Upness. I'm saying that right now. You're a gem. You know, they're not. They're just. There's just. I gotta say it. I gotta say it. You know, women who are who are facing the reality are gemstones. They are gemstones. Right? Well, then you guys are gemstones. Are you kidding me? Gemstones. Sometimes it's just that sometimes Kristen forgets that you can't have bravery without fear. So uh-huh. she, she thinks she's being weak when really she's being strong. Oh, she's being very strong. She's facing her shit and she's getting over it. <laughs> you get, well, you getting over it, you. that should be at, used loosely. Yeah, at her own pace. At her own pace. And that's probably Actually, a, a better way than saying getting over it, moving through it. Think of it moving as like the, it, this, big, yeah. this, big, this big swamp of shit. And on the, on one side of the swamp is called misery land, and on the other side of the swamp is called fucking freedom land. And you have to move through the swamp of shit to go from misery land to freedom land. So it's not getting over; it's moving through. And let's not forget that you could rage against the fact that you're in the swamp and delay the time it takes. To I'm get in the swamp muck. This is nasty. Why am I here? Fuck this. I hate I, my life. I hate the swamp. I'm going to beat it with a hammer. Oh, I can't do Why that. Why me? I'll, I'll, I'll beat the boat with the hammer because the swamp I can't <laughs> beat with the hammer. Oh, shit. Now there's a hole in my boat. The swamp water is coming in my boat. Oh, oh my God. Man, it's it smells worse than Obama's toilet. Oh God, the swamp water. Yuck. Okay, I think Michelle Obama's a man. Oh, I heard no. that. I heard that story. I know it's kind of unrelated to what we were talking about, but I think it's funny. And if that turns out to be true, I'm gonna be one I'm, happy girl. Look at like her quote unquote bone structure. And the it's a man's Adam bone. Apple, it's, it, like, it's a man's bone structure. Just look at her finger. Her fingers are guy's hands. She's got guy fingers. Are you sure it's not Michael Obama? Yeah, really. You know, you'd walk up to Michelle, and it'd be like, Mrs. Obama, are you a guy? And she'd be like, as I just said when she stated that, how did you know? I'm totally <laughs> a man. It's like a real voice comes out. How you doing? <laughs> Okay, but I will say, and you know, and like, what, what, what kind of fucking, you know, pedophile ring foster home did their kids come out of then? Ooh, I know. Michael Jackson's. Yeah, came out of Never Never Land. Um, if she is a man, why, why her? You know, why are they selecting her? And I mean, their family's probably not real. It's just probably put together, but why would they choose someone who's not really female? Why do they do anything? <laughs> Good question. They're weird. Their habits are pretty weird. Why, why, why do they wreck the environment when they, too, know that they have to share the same biosphere with everybody else? They probably think that they can run off to some other planet. It's like shoot yourself in the foot. I hate my enemy, so I'm going to shoot myself in the foot because I don't like my enemy. Boom, 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 boom. Take that enemy. Boom, 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 boom. And they're going to sting a little. Enemy, you hurting yet? <laughs> you know, it's like, what? Yeah. This is going to be the longest hangout call in history. How long? This video is probably going to be like four and a half, five hours. Damn, no one's going to watch that much of it. I'm just telling you guys. We, we, we ought to do a 10-hour one just to piss people off. We ought to do it just to piss YouTube off. Be like, you can watch a 10-hour video, you motherfuckers. Actually, actually, the cutoff is 8 hours. Oh, really? It won't let okay. you go I don't know, guys. I'm probably going to hit the sack soon. 
No. In the Darth Vader well, voice. I know that I know that I'll be talking to you tomorrow at some point. Yeah. You need to send This was really fun though. You need and it was really funny. And look at how easy it was to have fun. It was pretty easy. And all it took was me and Jay and Rich politely politely and benevolently making fun of your ass, and then you came on, and it's all good. <laughs> you guys really were making fun of me. <laughs> but in the most nicest complimentary way. We were doing it we were doing it as positive reconstruction. Anyway, um could you send your Skype information via Facebook? Me? So kind. Do what? It was like garbled. All I heard was Facebook. Um, Would you send your Skype information via Facebook? Did you not hear that? Sassy. Or how about I just send you her contact through Skype? Or so, what, whatever. Yeah, Skype information contact. It's all the same damn thing. <laughs> this microphone, this microphone is sometimes a Nazi from hell. Like it'll blurt me out and it'll make me sound all jarbled and stuff, and it kind of pisses me off. Like I'll be in the middle of a Skype call and it'll just randomly drop out on me, and it's like, what the fuck, you little bastard? Don't you do that to me? I don't know. Too bad there's nothing you can do about it. I hate when I get mad at technology because I I just. This one time I got so mad I felt like hitting my computer and I was like, this is out of hand. That, 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 that doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. Don't that's hit just, your laptop because you're mad. That, that, that's just the Anakin Skywalker coming out because he's a temper tantrum and little bitch who can't get a hold on things. Kristen, which hand is it out of? This one or this one? <laughs> Both. It's out of hand. You're mad at your computer, it's out of hand. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you, I don't... We've got the bar down here, and then this space up here is reserved for the mighty Apple. Little update manager's jumping up and down like a Jack Russell fucking terrier. Yeah, I, I, we got to show her the Matt killed at my inner child video. That's mm -hmm. hilarious. That, that, that's, yeah. Matt killed got my inner child. Here so you can use it as a boat anchor. Send it to me on Facebook and I'll watch it. <laughs> I wanted that. Mac is like one of the worst operating systems out there. It's. Uh, I'll, I'll send Mac. you. I'll, I'll send you I my. Version. I'll send you my version of it, the crazy connections version. I've always hated Apple. Crash different. Crash differently. Um, you look wait, so you want me to watch it me? now? No, 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 I mean just in general, we're just talking about it, I can send it to you later. Okay, you look well, I think I'm gonna... Right now, I'm, right now, I'm just sending, I'm just sending Rich your Skype on. Oh, cool. I was gonna say, you look even more amazing without your glasses. You look incredible. See, I'm just gonna yeah, bombard well, you with I'm just gonna bombard you with comments until you stop bashing yourself because you're totally worth it. Okay, I know what you're saying, but neither of you guys have seen me in person, and I'm just saying I don't look nearly as pretty in person. I'm Bologna. just saying. Bologna. No, I'm no. Bologna. I'm no. gonna call Bologna. I'm calling Bologna right now. You can call Bologna uh, all you want. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna buy it. No. By the way, no. I like how you call it Bologna. I'm glad I'm not the only one who does that. Both it is me, spelled Bologna. Yeah, both me and Rich have had plenty of experiences with women in person who think, oh, I'm blah, 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 blah. And they're beautiful, but, you know. Okay, you okay, can't, okay. Here's the end. Can't tell them that because they're when, like, you know. Okay, Dave. When a girl does that, I unscrew the cork to the invisible bottle of Jack Daniels, and I go. And I just start chugging away because I know. I know it's a load of shit, but I'm just going to get drunk and really nice so that way I can talk you out of it because I, I would go mad otherwise. 
I'd be like, no, you are not ugly. You are perfectly fine. And I'm going to throw my computer and tell him like a goddamn boy. Christian, I have a question. It's angry. Christian, I have a question. Yes. Do you think that do you think that you are higher than God and exempt from the quantum physics? Oh yeah. So you think you're exempt, huh? You think it doesn't apply to you? Of course. Yeah, you're full of shit. But anyway. <laughs> you so <laughs> Nobody's higher than God. Oh, if you were Nobody's if you than God. If you, weren't, if you weren't worthy and deserving and beautiful and so on and so forth, you wouldn't be getting all these reflections. Not from him, uh -huh. not from me, not all the other people you've been getting them from lately. So do you think the quantum mirror is just like, like lying to you or fucking with you? Like, hey, physics work <laughs> one. I don't like hey. it. So I'm going to make up, down, and down, up, and, and gravity is going like, to... <laughs> you guys are all chuckling, but my point is, my point is, not one person... Not one person who's seen me in person has said that I'm gorgeous. You know, it's not like that. I look way different. In two years, in two years, you better be ready because I am going to show up and I'm going to say it to you in person. I'm going to say you are the most gorgeous woman I have ever seen in my life. And Okay, that wouldn't be true. Oh, that wouldn't be true. That Not the most gorgeous. Like, you put... No, okay. No, okay. I'm gonna tell you that the fact. No, 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 no. Could you all the anorexic girls who model for Victoria's Secret and are highly photoshopped are far more pretty? God, than you know what? When my when when my uh, when my high self esteem rants totally fail, I'm just gonna sick uh, him on you. Yeah, you, know, you, don't want, you don't want to see what I'm like. You don't want to deal with me. Because I will yeah, miss I'm, I'm just going gonna, I'm just gonna to be like, Rich, make a video and send it off to her. Now. Tell her she's full of shit. <laughs> okay. I just, to me, it's not going to seem valid until there's someone giving me these kind of compliments when they see me in person. Okay, and what if, what about Mr. Art Museum dude who seemed to, um, you know, I'm not going to go into your personal business, but that was a um, physical reality in-person reflection that you're conveniently ignoring. Duh. No. And then there's that guy who works with you who's like, Dude, here's my number. I know I don't really know you yet, but will you be my fucking girlfriend? Because you're fucking hot and you're awesome. Yeah, there was that guy <laughs> at your work. That's an in-person physical reality fucking thing there. So there's at least two that I know of. So, you know, who are you trying to bullshit? Uh -huh. And just possibly saying. three if I just decide to show up with an airline ticket to Ohio and just, you know, drop the surprise <laughs> in on an airborne insertion and go, Hi, here's a bundle of roses. I came to the 1,500 miles just to say hello. Well, hey, you know, you That would be nice. Know, because, because Henry Kissinger might show up and say, Kristen, you are beautiful, but I cannot rape you. I prefer boys. <laughs> that would be the most flattering compliment I've ever received. <laughs> I swear. I would never say one more thing about this. <laughs> maybe I had to show up at a kiss maybe I had to show up at a kiss in your mask and do that routine just <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, take the mask off and go, surprise, I'm not him. <laughs> Alright, guys, uh, I'm probably going to hit the sack. The, I'm going to bed, I mean. Well, yeah, I'll hit the sack, I don't know what that means. Well, apparently getting off of Google Plus is able to be turned into something it's not. Well, Dave and I kind of have this joke where... I always say, when I'm about to leave, talking to him, I say, I'm getting off. And... I'm like, oh, really? I'm getting off to the sack. No, no, not okay. that way. I don't mean it that way. I'm not getting off to the sack. I'm going to bed. You oh, guys. You're going, off, you're going off to the sack? All right. <laughs> okay. That's where I'm headed.
<laughs> right now. Oh. <laughs> hey, she can't she can't go do it that way right now because because Snick Willie ain't over there to, to to give her some Monica training. <laughs> I, I just can't Dude, believe you. You're you're like no guy wants me. There's a neon sign above my head. There's a neon sign above two guys that are in your physical reality, and it's like, what's stopping you except yourself? Well, well, one, one guy. Well, one guy moved to Texas, but still, there's that other guy that's still there. But the point is, she's gotten reflections in her physical reality that totally call her on her bullshit. Okay. Well, I am saying it's awfully convenient that there's one guy in my reality. Yeah, but all look, you guys are too look, far away. It look, doesn't look, matter, you know. Look. Two in total. I will be a I'm not firefighter. To... And look, Kristen. I will be a firefighter. I will have the money. They still, look, they still count. They still happen. They still call you on your bullshit. Before it was like, I never get anybody in person saying that. Then you got it in person. It's like, well, well, well yeah. I, I never get any. No, wait, I guess I did. But, oh, well, it doesn't count because, uh, you know, how many excuses are you going to try to grab at to remain in your own? Paradigm. And you're right, it does sound like bullshit. It does sound like a lot of bullshit. It is, it, well, it's self-talk. You know what I mean? It's that talking yourself down into that state of where no reflection is, is good enough when you're in that mode. Like, you know, you could have like 500 guys walk up to you today and be like, wow, you're gorgeous. But the next day you'll be like, well, I don't get that every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Or if, there, if it was real, it would be a thousand today, but it's mm -hmm. not. Ow, you know. It can't be crazy because it would have to be the next level of appreciation. Everybody in the town would have to be leaving roses in my front door for it to be true. Okay, so that would be keep, annoying. You just start upping the expectations to the point of just ridiculous. It's like neon um, sign. Neon sign somewhere out there in Ohio and somewhere out in Texas, somewhere out there, over there, somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where. Just all around. But I, th I, th but I mean, look at look at that beautiful smile, the white teeth. She's she's a lovely lady. She's lovely, and I'm gonna say it five on it because she's a lovely girl, and a, you would be a fine lass for a guy like me or <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> I'm calling it out right now because I'm an honest son of a bitch and I'm not going to hide it. Well, thank you very, no, very much for you that. Know, you know how many opportunities I've had with women like you that were just as pretty and intellectual and I was too much of a nervous wreck to fucking say something? Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to call it for what it is. I'm going to call the purple elephant in the room and say there it is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bingo. He's making a point I made you a long time ago. Remember how I told? Remember how I told you what how I was when I was a teenager? It's like, well, that's you, and you were shy and blah blah blah. And that's it's like, dude, that is not like exclusive to me. Like most guys, like especially, you know, when they're teens and stuff, it's like they got the low self esteem thing going on too. But you're expecting them to to grow the balls you won't grow and walk up to you and be like, hey, Kristen, you're blah, you know what I mean? And it will well just because. You you were a teenager and you're a nice guy and you felt that way. Doesn't mean all the others. And, and now you're meeting yet another person that when they were in high school, you know, was the same way. Here he is admitting it that he was too freaking <laughs> terrified to approach the girl. So yeah, there's there's yet another guy as proof. You're like, but but how, how do I know there's any other guys? Only you're telling me this, Dave. Only you're telling me. Here's somebody else. You know. You're yeah. not alone. But Dave, you're, not alone. you're the only guy in the universe who could accept me for who I am, and then like <laughs> all these other people. <laughs> right here, are neon signs everywhere. Do you need neon signs? Do you need me to light up like Broadway? Yeah. Do you need, me to, have the, do you need Listen, me to have the rock? Works with you and Garrett and Rich. You got all these people. Do, do, you know, do, 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 do you need to have the? Do you need to have the New York? Except you, right? You know. Do, do, do you need to have the New York City Rockettes standing out front with signs saying "I accept you for who you are" and "I think you're an amazing person"? Do I do I need to have them doing the high kick thing like they do on Broadway? You know, yes. with the neon signs and the and the you tap dancing to. and the play and the 
and the whole Dude, you know what? Tradition, and the marching it's band like, and the... Dude, in that in, in the state of being when she gets like that and self defeating shit, the fucking Chicago Bulls could attend her eighteenth birthday and she still won't <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> oh god. You guys are on a trip. <laughs> no, you're on a trip of sorrow. Hey, check it out. When I had a, when I had a belief system that when I'm helping other female friends through stuff, no other female friends are gonna come and help me and back me. They didn't. Then when I cleared that belief system, I got Katarina, I got Daphne, all these people helping me out with other female friends. Then there was the belief system of, you know, I never have any other guys who are similar to me backing me up, helping me with female friends. I finally cleared that belief system, and then here comes Rich, and then here we are, and he's backing me and, you know, helping me raise your self-esteem and stuff. So it's all fucking quantum. I don't care how crazy it sounds to people. Reality's a fucking, you know, holographic interface. It's a fucking fractal mirror. And, you know, the core beliefs, the frequency you resonate, determine the fucking external. Jesus said as much. Quantum physicists say as much. And every time I clear a belief system that says this can't fucking be, all of a sudden that that I used to think can't be starts popping into my reality. It's happened too many times. I'm not going to be like, well, that's just a bizarre coincidence. That's not real. No, I see it happening in my real physical fucking reality. So, of course, it's fucking happening. Every time I clear a belief system, boom, the physical reality changes. That's happened to me way too many times for me to be like, no, that's just all in my imagination. That's just stupid. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, well, this, this... Big screen TV must not really be here. It's this little bitty thing. I'm just deluding myself with my huge ego. Yeah, or what the fuck ever. We tell ourselves all these stories because we think that nothing good can happen to us. So if something good happens, it's like, no, that must not be because, you know. So it's like, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm using that as like a sarcastic slang. But, you know, it's like every time I clear a fucking belief system, Poof, the reality changes. That's happened way too many times to me. Now, I can understand where people who don't have much experience of observation with that, they can look at what I'm saying about it and be like, Dave, you're full of shit. And it's like, well, that's fine. I mean, you haven't experienced it in your reality. You have a belief system that says that can't happen. So, understandably, what I'm saying about it, this seemed like total fucking bullshit, and I don't blame anybody for seeing it that way. Dave, you're crazy. You're smoking crack, whatever it is. Fine. You know, I understand that people coming from that angle can see it that way. But I've lived it, and because I've lived it in my physical reality, I'm not going to sit here saying, well, it's physically happened to me over and over again, but I'm just going to pretend it's not. I'm just going to turn a blind eye and go, no, no, no. That's <laughs> that's not fucking happening. Because that, that would be retarded for me to turn a blind eye to it. Yeah, it's happening in front of me, but you know, I'm, I'm just going to pretend it's not there. That'll make it go away. If I just pretend it's not there. Yeah, right. Pretend gravity's not there. Walk off a cliff and see how, see where that lands you. You know. You know what, you know what it reminds me of? It's like uh, ASTF movie. If you've ever watched those, Dave, they're hilarious. Oh the, yeah, ASTF. I like the, trains. No, where the guys like I I hate gravity. <laughs> and up he goes, and and the guy's sitting there on the ground, is like yeah. That no, was so I, I don't think I've heard that. I don't think I've seen those. No. Oh, Dave, they're funny. Oh, you need to watch them. There's all six of them. Have you have you seen the um the ADHD videos? Uh, Scient uh -huh. Scientifically accurate Ninja Turtles. Scientifically accurate Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah, you showed me that. That was so <laughs> freaking funny. <laughs> no. Now, son, don't stick to that cactus. You're dead. <laughs> Oh, that hey, that's a nice dog you have there. Wait, there's no dog there. Oh, and then they bark off with each other. Ooh, I used to watch him all the time. Uh oh, got your nose. Look out, he's got a nose. Oh my gosh. What flavor? Yeah. What, what pie flavor is that? Pie flavor. 
Oh like yeah, that. that was my favorite one. I used to. I used to I've really love that, that one. Oh, once you see it, you're gonna know. You know what? I'm actually gonna. I'm gonna get that for you real fast. It won't take that long. Yeah, really funny. Why do you um, know it's so but yeah, scientifically accurate Ninja that? Turtles. Very funny. You know What'd you just say? Know, Sorry. Why do you know accept my contact request on Skype? Because she's not on Skype right now. <laughs> no, whatever. Just for it's that, fine. I'm never accepting it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> ASDF. I cannot believe that you're 19, Rich. Hey, have, e have either of you ever um, seen those illiterati videos? I don't believe so. You've never seen the illiterati? That's freaking hilarious. I'll just show that to you sometime. Sounds pretty funny. Uh, YouTube's being a little bitch. And... Oh, okay, it might work. I don't know, but it's really funny, Dave. And if it doesn't work tonight, I'll link you to it later. Yeah. And for anybody who's actually tolerated from the beginning of, of this video all the way through to this point in the conversation, for anybody who's actually suffering through the whole thing and are asking, what the fuck does any of this now have to do with red light, green light, and Drake and the globalists and anything else? Plenty. Because it's these basic societal core belief systems that keep you blind to like anything else that's me out there. I mean, if a core belief system, you know, realizing their own self-worth, gee, what else could it keep people from? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I will, I will back up my, uh, you saying I can't believe you're 19. There are moments where I act like I'm a super, like, I'm 45 or something, full of experience, and then there's other moments where I'm like this, where I'm acting like I'm 15. <laughs> it's called having an inner child. You should try it sometime. Being happy with who you are, being vibrant, being not afraid to be crazy, you know? Yeah, now with, now with me, with me, I never, I never reveal my age publicly for a very good reason. I mean, I, I let people know I'm over the age of 18, of course, but... Because people have these paradigms about age, and because, you know, I'm out there, like, public speaking and relaying information, it's better for people's egos to put me in whatever age box that they feel is comfortable so that they can process the information. Because if my actual age, let's say, it's, it's too, too, too young or too old as far as outside that little box that says, if he falls in here, I can understand and relate to him. But if he's to this side or this side, then I can't. Mm -hmm. Then every word out of my mouth, the context changes to something completely unrecognizable. One analogy I use is like, take the word drinking. Um, let's imagine somebody had the context that the only context for the word drinking is if someone's an alcoholic or a stone-cold freaking alcoholic drunkard. And they didn't think that the word drinking could possibly apply to, you know, gee, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking this, right? So you use the word in the context of RC Cola or Dr. Pepper or whatever, but someone's belief system for that word is assigned that only to alcoholism. Oh, you just admitted you're an alcoholic. Don't you backpedal. Don't you try to take a bath. I just, I just caught you. It's like, no, I'm talking about this RC. No, you're not. Don't try to make excuses. You need to get yourself to an AA meeting. You just admitted it. So, you know, people view the world through how however they decide to frickin' view it. There's no talking, you know, them out of it. And the way I talk is, shall we say, in a lot of cases, older than my actual age. But the way I look, depending on the way I look, whether I have face hair or not or whatever, can be younger than my actual age. So, like, my quote-unquote age tends to be this big fucking enigma, which really helps me because then people are paying more attention to the information I'm speaking 
and not who is Dave Kelso, what age is he, and this and that, and da da da. They're paying more attention to the information I'm putting forth. Because, as far as that information, who I am is fucking irrelevant. I'm another equal human being to every other equal human being out there. And I just have a perspective. I have my perspective. And, you know, if the information from my perspective that I put out can help someone inspire someone, whatever, then cool. I'm happy to put that out there. Because inspiring people to be the change they want to create and slowly one person at a time through that inspiration making this world a better place is what's most important. Because as it stands, we've got a bunch of criminal fucking gang corporate thugs running the whole fucking planet and a bunch of, you know, the masses of people who think that having babysitters lord it over us and screw us in the ass is better than taking personal responsibility for their own lives. So, you know, the whole global paradigm shift is more fucking important than who the fuck I am. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And the only the, thing I will say, though, I just maybe say, people... I my, my information is better or worse than anybody else's. I just want to put that out there. I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal like, oh, yes, my information is more oh. No, I'm just saying that what I, what I am saying is more important than who the fuck is Dave Kelso, that's all. You know. Yeah. Same. But, and that's the way you choose to do it. Also, like, um, how Katarina does it. She helps contribute to it by talking about herself and her own experiences, which is just as, you know, it's just a different way of doing it. Bingo. But she also doesn't focus on age and status and things like that either. Yeah. She, she focuses purely on experiences, her, her perspective on it. And you might have noticed that's what I do too. Although because I've learned to get halfway decent with the video editor, which by the way, when I started out in 2010, I didn't know dick about editing video. My, my first original videos sucked pretty hard. But, wow. you know... Kind of like so, mine, just like a simple video, no editing whatsoever. That's how mine started originally, or really horrible. But, you know, you get better as, as things progress. But anyway, because I'm halfway decent at an editor now, when I come across pieces of video footage and stuff that I feel are expressing the same point I would make, but I feel that maybe they expressed it better, in better words. Maybe it's like only a quarter the length that one of my fucking rants would have been. Then I insert that where I would have put my words. A lot of people are like, oh, well, you put that there because you're, you're putting that person on a pedestal and hanging on their words and blindly believing them. No, I'm using that because I feel that what they said already matches what I already believed prior to even knowing that that other person existed. And then I came across their content, and I'm like, oh, this matches how I feel. Not only that, it explains it better than I can. So why not use it? And you give them credit. Well, of course, in these days, you know, the credit is usually in the video itself most of the time. You got yeah. those little things in the corners that, you know, show what website it's from and stuff. I mean, if somebody's got a little stamp in the corner, I'm not going to remove it. Exactly. Why would I do that? Yeah, I need to... I really want to start learning how to edit videos a bit better. I think it'll make my video is a lot more enjoyable and just cooler. Well, start where you are for now, you know. There's nothing wrong with just talking in the, into the camera and expressing yourself. Nothing at all wrong with that. I don't even know how to record video, much less anything else. <laughs> See, you're already a step ahead of him, so there you go. And I'm, a, I'm about as computer nerdish as they come. I just haven't really had much experience with video except basic high school, you know, video editing. But, you know, I haven't ever uploaded or done a video, you know, of my own work. So you're already ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. There's Me? a lot of stuff that I know. Yeah, so just, you know, get up there and do what you were doing like on those others. Just be yourself and speak your mind. 
that is a good starting point. That is good enough. I'll try to do that. You don't have Sorry, to. Kinda... You don't have to meet these illusions of expectation. Okay. 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 If, Dave. if you think that you have to get good at video Dave. editing before you do all that, Dave. you're expecting Dave. a plot, Dave. Rich. Dave. You're a plot. Hold Dave. on. Dave. You're expecting Dave. forty three. Dave. 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 <laughs> I was gonna do the Yoda thing to back up your point. Fucker. 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 Right now. <laughs> this is the fifteen-year-old creeping out. No, that, that's no, no, sorry. That was Tourette syndrome. <laughs> now that's funny. I actually do have a mild case of Tourette, so anybody out there who's like going to be like, "You're bashing people," fuck you, Dave. <laughs> I actually have it, so fuck you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I find it funny how you have Tourette's. Yeah, it's funny. It's, you're the whole, like, so out-of-control speech thing is, like, 5% or less of the cases. It's just that's what the media, like, hypes the shit out of. Oh, like, yeah. I promise you that when I swear, it's intentional and it's conscious. It's, it's funny, Dave, because when you're talking, you're, like, you're just, like, like a madman. It's kind of like, like, he yeah. is mad, isn't he? Hmm. Quite intellectual, I'd say. <laughs> exactly, there you go. <laughs> you get a lot of smiles, though. That's a good thing. I am Darth Powder. Oh, my God. I think Rich saw that oh, one. Oh, no. They say hey, he's got to go. Rich, go, go, Rich, go, go. Saw... Hey, Rich, you saw, you saw my Darth Powder thing, didn't you? Yes. I am Darth Powder. I am Darth Powder. Now I now I am. You will join me. Together we shall rule the galaxy as father and son. I don't know. Here's Mr. Vick. works. I'm just saying, if you haven't figured it out already, we're just a couple of Cracker Jacks in a box. When we start talking in a conversation, we get on a roll, and then there's no stopping, and it's like an avalanche that's going 600 miles an hour. You can try, <laughs> but you're going to get mowed down under 12 feet of snow. How do you guys end your conversations? Um, when once we're, I get when tired, we're too tired to speak anymore, they end... Yeah, when I get too tired and I just tell Dave that he needs to go die and fuck himself because my brain is too tired to think anymore. Oh my god. That's when they, that's when they die. <laughs> that's really true. Like, I have to... Sometimes when David is... Shut up! I need to fucking sleep! <laughs> Guys, I'm about to get off here, I'm just saying. My brain, like, when I get this tired, I can't oh, go, form go, responses go, very go, easily. Go, 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 go. Ow. Go before it's too late. Go. 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 Hey guys, if it's you never gonna end. Power. Power. He's gonna keep you. He's gonna keep you on for. He's gonna keep you on for another, he's gonna keep you on for another five hours now. Hey, Rich, shut up. No, he's not. If you only knew the power of the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Vader. Execute Order 69. I'm in the mood to fuck. As you would. Execute Order 420 and get me a really big joint. <laughs> As you wish, my master. Execute Order 666. I have a meeting with Satan. <laughs> Otherwise known, <laughs> Otherwise known as Darth Maul. Oh my God, I love, I love Rich's reenactment of what Satan would be like. That was beautiful, and I love, I love your whole persona right now, Dave. It's really and good. by the way, by Darth Maul, I mean Darth Shopping Mall. We're opening up a chain of stores. <laughs> Oh, God. 
I like how you even got into costume for it. That was sweet. Lord Vader, ass rape Kissinger with your lightsaber. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Riches in costume. Is your name... Your name is Richard, right? No. <laughs> Don't say my real just, name in public. Nobody's just to know who I am. Just rebuild it? What do you have a to what do you have an ATM machine on that torso light bright? What the hell is an aluminum falcon? falcon. What do you mean they blew up the Death Star? I'm sorry, a bunch of fucking teenagers blowing up the fucking Death Star. I'm, I'm just all stressed out. <laughs> and, and what about Panda Bear? Panda Mammy, or whatever you call it. Panda Mammy, whatever the hell her name was. <laughs> guys, I'm not getting any of the references of what you're doing, but it's really funny to watch you guys do this. So I'm just saying. <laughs> and I and I threw and I threw the whole Senate at him. The whole Senate. <laughs> no, you got you got to do this in order to do it right. Huh? You got to do this in order to do it right. Because then the crying thing starts, and then it gets really funny, and then it goes from there. Remember, you got to do it in order. Oh, hold on, hold on, mate. I got another call. Yeah. I, no, no, that, no, that's what, no. I, I, I'll, I'll just have a coke. Yeah, yeah. No. Is it... <laughs> oh my god. I'll have to show you that video sometime. The robot chicken mm -hmm. video. Sure. It's hilarious. He's Lord Powder. All right, guys. Lord Powder. This is fucking crazy. I never thought this conversation would go here. This is the worst video I've ever done. And anybody who watches this all the way through is going to view me in ways they never thought possible. Look at what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Look at what, You're wearing this in a Google Hangout. Both of you. They're probably going to see me in this black hoodie and they're going to think I'm an ISIS member. So. You're the Brit. <laughs> you're the yeah. British man who's been beheading the citizens. Darth Obama. Go to your hmm. telephone. Right. It's more like Darth Roth. Darth Roth, child. Hmm. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Hey, you know, when I say paradigm shift and educational comedy, I fucking mean it, bitch. That was actually really funny. I never thought we were going to get this crazy. Well, the thing is, is you haven't seen most of the paradigm shift and educational comedy videos, so you actually don't know how crazy we get. Well, I am also, I'm starting to figure it out, and I'm a lovely added to the crew. You see, for, for me, this is pretty much business as usual. It's only new for you. Hmm. When you got a little more time and can watch some more of the videos, shit, you want to see some of the really fucking crazy videos, I can show you some of that shit, no problem. <sighs> Do we want to close this bad boy out? Considering there's nothing else left to do or add or say, even though we've been over time for like three and a half <laughs> hours now. Yeah, let's see what time is it now. It's 3.40. I'd say this video is somewhere between four and a half and five hours if I had to take a guess. Yeah, congratulations. Although, although I should... I should download it and go through it and take out like some of like the best parts and clips and string them together in like one shorter video just for fun. Yeah, you know not what to, you need. Not to replace this video, but just for fun. No, hold, the, hold on, hold on. What you need to do is you need to take the chunk out with the important bit, you know, and just have.
series business, and then the rest of the shit that we did, just put it together in a compilation. And well, this well, look, this video is go is going up as is, and I'm not removing it. Remember this well, and you that. Can, you can have you can have the no, whole I, thing. No, listen. So beyond that, because we started with all the serious, and then it eventually moved into the crazy. Now I just got to make a video with all with all the best of the crazy. Uh huh. Yeah, with a light touch of serious, but mostly crazy. Yeah, you went into you became uh, Lord Powder, and I became Darth Powder. That was kind of funny. Uh, that was wacky. Darth Powder. I mean, I've done the Darth Powder thing before, but this is <laughs> this is like you did, a, no, you took ball. you took you took Darth Powder, and you became Sidious, and I became Darth Powder. So. Uh, I was able to kind of, I was kind of able to retort off of you a little bit. What the hell is an aluminum falcon? <laughs> I still love that. What the hell is an aluminum falcon? <coughs> what do you mean they blew up the Death Star? Just rebuild it? Who's gonna give me a loan, jackhole? You? What do you got an ATM on that? Torso light Torso light bright. <laughs> now get your six foot two asthmatic ass back here. I'm gonna tell everyone a, what a whiny bitch you were about Patamami or Panda Bear or whatever the hell her name was. Oh, oh she's, crying. she's crying. She's crying. Oh, they're there. I'm, I'm, I'm just, not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stressed out. A bunch of fucking teenagers blew up the fucking Death Star. <laughs> Oh, that was hilarious. I love that scene. That's like one of the best in the whole thing. I still love the ad with uh, Boba Fett where he's dancing with Padme and he's like, that, that was fucked up. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. It was just like, and Anakin sitting there like a jealous little bitch. He's just like. I like I like the one where um where where Boba Fett and ends up um feeding Han Solo to this pack of Tauntauns. He's like, all right, everybody, let's say it. And I thought he smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> Remember that? Mm -hmm. That was great. Well, I guess that's that's all for the serious and the insane and everything else. And I should probably hit the stop broadcast button on this before we go into total uber overtime. Before before it goes from funny to just stupid. So thank you everybody for listening, watching, hiding under your bed and being halfway tempted to call the police. We really appreciate <laughs> Uh, you know your your viewership there. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your enemies. Tell Obama he's a little whiny bitch. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching and uh, catch y'all later. <laughs>